All right, we're here today with, um, can you say your name? Sarah Garvey. Sarah Garvey. Yes. And what, what are the socials as well? Yeah, Sarah Garvey on um, YouTube, Sarah Garvey 2012. On uh, Instagram, I'm Sarah Garvey 81. And on Facebook, I'm Sarah Garvey because I'm old school. So yeah, <laughs> like I've got a Facebook, so I'm Sarah Garvey on there. I don't have a Snapchat or anything like that, but... Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, which is now X. Yeah. Sarah Garvey, yeah. Okay, cool, cool. And what's your, what's your favourite platform? My favourite platform is YouTube. Yeah. The reason why is because I get to do the long form content. Like, because me, uh, I, I'm cool with short form content, but I'm, I'm a talker and I'm someone who likes to delve a little bit deep and, you know, do, deal with like subjects on like just more than the surface level so when you get time to go into subjects that's what I like to do okay right so YouTube's better for that yeah right? YouTube's better for that no oh, fair enough yeah. um on your Instagram you say it's your fourth Instagram it's my fourth Instagram man. how come <laughs> um my fourth Instagram because I am I call myself a teller of truth yeah regardless of what um <laughs> because of what you put in front of me so if you ask me about race, religion, politics, social issues, relationships, men, women, whatever, trans issues, all that kind of stuff. I'll just tell the truth. Um, a lot of the time, unfiltered. Yeah. So what that does was when you tell the unfiltered truth, you get cancelled. Yeah. So yeah, I've been cancelled on Instagram for talking about trans community. I've been cancelled for talking about religion. Um, yeah, I've been cancelled yeah. for a few things. So yeah, it's my fourth one. Would you not say that's a breach of you know your personal be, being able to talk about anything, freedom of speech? Yeah, um, I'm a I'm a big um, advocate for freedom of speech. If yeah. I'm honest, so I'm a freedom of speech advocate, and I feel like not even just I feel like, but I, people can see that freedom of speech is being shut down. There are certain voices that are allowed to be uh, spoken, yeah. uh, that are allowed to be used, sorry, and then there are certain voices that aren't. So, yeah, I'm an advocate. So, yeah, what is happening now with the social media is what I found is that freedom of speech is definitely being quelled. Definitely. It's a cancel culture now. It's it? a cancel culture now and you've got to watch what you say. Yeah. And you've got to watch who you say it to. You've got to watch who's listening, watch who's about, watch who's filming. Watch, do you know what I'm saying? It's just like people yeah. are not allowed to kind of be themselves anymore. So what you kind of get is this monotone, like, voice that always says the same thing. You ask them yeah. the exact same question, you'll get the exact same answer. So I think that's what they want. I think if they talk to you about any kind of subject, they just want the same uniformed answer from everyone. It's crazy. So that's, that's going to the red pill, blue pill thing as well, isn't it? Um, for me, I think the red pill, blue pill was a... The red pill space, which I was in for a, a while, yeah. and I would still call myself someone who's in there, um, it was, a, it was a different voice to what we have heard about women yeah. and about relationships. We have always heard um, female voices. Females have had talk shows. They've had magazines. They've had all kinds of spaces to, vo to vent what they think about relationships. And I think the Red Pill space came along and men were like, do you know what? We're going to say what we want to say. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, it, it's, it kind of gain traction and a lot of women because they've been so for me because they've been so used to just being allowed to say what they want yeah all of the men within that space got quote unquote cancelled and they're misogynists or they're part of the patriarchy and all this kind of stuff so it's just like yeah we kind of live in what i call a gynocentric order so it's like a female-led society even though they say men it's yeah. a patriarchy when it comes to what is allowed to be said it's all female-led Okay, right. So you think there's more conviction on men talking about topics? Men aren't allowed to speak. Men aren't allowed to generally say what they want to say because men, as men, we speak straightforward yeah. and to the fact and to the point. Women speak with their feelings. So if you hear a woman speak, she'll be like, oh, yeah, oh, well, I feel like... She'll mm. always start with, well, I feel like. And it's like, well, we're not talking about your feelings. We're talking about a subject. Do you get what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like now it's like when you speak, you have to put into your speech or allow for people's feelings when you speak. And it's like, but if I allow for her feelings, mm. hers and hers and hers, or his and his, 
I'm going to, I'm just not going to say what's on my mind. I'm going to have to be cancelling out my own speech yeah. based on someone else's feelings and how they're going to feel about me saying something. I don't do that. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I just don't do it. I just say what I want to say. Yeah, fair enough. Would you say your the way you come across and do your freedom of speech, was that, do you get a lot of people kind of criticising that? Um, I get, I've had a lot of criticism. So throughout the years, I've been on social media for a while. So yeah. um, I kind of started debating religion. Then I started debating social issues. Then I started doing interviews with a lot of controversial characters, people like Tommy Robinson, mm. uh, people like Sargon of Akkad, um, politicians like Lee Jasper, that kind of stuff. And then I kind of got into um, like the red pill space. And um, yeah, throughout all of those times, <laughs> people have always tried to come and say, ah, oh, you can't say, you can't say, you can't say. And I'm just like, listen, man, I'm one man yeah. with a voice and so are you. So is everyone. And I'm not going to tell you how to speak or what to speak about. And I seriously don't want anybody to do any, that, that, that to me. I don't want them to do that to me. So. No, fair enough, fair enough. Did you see what happened with uh, Russell Brand the other day? Yeah, I saw what happened with Russell Brand. Um, again, this is what I said, yeah. part of the female-led gynocentric order, where if they feel a certain way, because remember, he hasn't been convicted of anything. He hasn't been mm. arrested. He hasn't, no, nothing like that's happened. Someone, a female, have, <laughs> have come out and said, he made me feel mm. like this. It's like, okay, cool. I'm not saying he didn't do it. Yeah. I'm not saying he did. <laughs> I'm saying, what are we proving here? What are we going to, what are we convicting of him of? What, what's his charge? There is no charge. What? Mm. He's been charged via the media? Do you know what I mean? And that's what's going on. People will literally charge via media nowadays and just think that, yeah, that means you should be, you should be canceled. Why? Because a bunch of women say so. So through ac accusations enough to cancel someone. Accusations is enough to cancel <clears throat> people. And what that's done with me is that that has made me move and sit, because I've seen it. Yeah, it's made me move very differently when it comes to women. It has. Um, I can't be reckless. I can't be left alone with women. I, I don't want to. Uh, I did an interview with a woman with just me and her a few months back, and, and even then I was like, mm, I'm a little bit uncomfortable with this, you know, because she could come out and just say, Oh, he made me feel like this, and I'm like, yeah. I'm done. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm done for. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, I would. Pr I prefer now when I'm doing interviews to, for it to be me and another man in the room. Do you so get what I'm saying? Does it, does it kind of scare you now, being around yeah, women? It's, it's, in, it's, yeah, it's a little bit scary now, being around women, because it's like, well, you had Trevor Bauer the other day, I don't know if you saw the, the, uh, baseball, the player. baseball player, yeah. what happened yeah. with him. You had Trevor Bauer being accused, you've had Russell Van being accused, you've had Benjamin Mendy being accused, you've had the JLS singer, I remember he was accused, mm -hmm. he got off. It's just, it's just becoming rampant now, and I'm just like, yeah. you know what, you guys ain't catching me. I prefer to just stay by myself. Like, I'm just be like, I, I, I don't want to be alone with random women. No, I just don't. You almost have to have cameras everywhere, don't you? You have to have yeah, cameras everywhere. Yeah. And, and I've actually advocated for men to record their meetings with women. And now that's not gone down very well on the women's side. I yeah. can imagine though, yeah. yeah but yeah. I'm saying, well, the bottom line is, if I'm a man yeah. and I'm meeting you for like the first, and I don't really know you, I'm going to have to record you. Because yeah. you could come back and say, he made me, he done this, he made me feel that way, and my life is over. So I would prefer to be looked upon as a misogynist mm. than a rapist. I see what you mean. Do you, you know mean, what I'm yeah. saying? Like, yeah. I, I would prefer, but because you're not getting me with that kind of charge. No way. <laughs> <laughs> no way. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not having that kind of charge. Um, talking about Tony Bauer, mm -hmm. um, because I think he's. Trevor Bauer. Oh, it's Trevor Bauer. Sorry, yeah, Trevor sorry, Bauer. Yeah. He's, he's worth quite a lot of money, though, isn't he? I think it's 51 million, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. Um, do you know what happened with that exactly? I think someone accused him of... The woman accused him. Um, she texted her friends before realising, be before going to meet him. So she was like, my next victim, her text said, next victim, Trevor Bauer, yeah. is worth 51 million. So her friend's like, you better get that bag. Damn. She texts back saying, well, I've got to get him to choke me out. <laughs> right? Like, this is what she's texting her friend. Yeah. And apparently that's exactly what happened. And then the morning after, she's videoing herself, like laying next to him, like, hey. But she told people that she was violently attacked. I see, yeah, yeah. And so it's like, well, once all of this evidence comes out, it's like, this isn't like a violent attack. This looks like you actually set this up. She was interviewed to, with some lady in America. And um, she just looked like a liar. She just looked like a liar. <laughs> yeah, and everything that she was saying was lying. And I'm just like, 
even though she looks like a liar and you can see she's clearly lying, mm. my thing is, is she going to go to prison for it? Yeah, I see what you mean. Is she going to go to prison for it? And if it was the other way around. If it was the other way around. Mm. Trevor Bauer lost his, um, he didn't play in, in, in Major League Baseball for two years. Wow. Um, remember what happened to Benjamin Mendy? He didn't play for two years. Mm. He had to fight it. Now these people have lost out on so much money, time, their family, all of this kind of stuff. You can't get that kind of stuff back. And these women just get to walk off into the night like they've never done anything. It's like you just destroyed that person's life. Like, yeah. that, and it's like, that is where we're at. We're, we are allowed in this society right now for women to destroy the lives of men and just get away with it. And if anything, they get a bit more because now they're kind of famous. Right, they get clout. <laughs> They yeah, get clout, they get clout it, so. yeah, yeah. You know, that's the times we're living in, man. I, th I think it's scary because when, you, when you're talking about Trevor Bauer, it's like, um, what happens if he didn't have that text? What happens right. if she never sent that text or she right. never took that video? Right. He, how, he might have ended in jail, right? How many, it makes you wonder how many men are sitting down in a prison cell that yeah. have said that they didn't do anything, that really didn't do anything, but because a woman cried, because remember there was a time mm. where, where a woman crying was a big thing, like, oh my God, she's crying, something must have happened. Yeah. Not anymore. <laughs> she nice. could just be trying to get some money, bro. Like, <laughs> women know how to cry nowadays. Like, and they know that it's that you can be that damsel in distress and garner all of the attention and people will automatically assume it happened with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Mm. Do you remember? That she came wild. out. Yeah, that was wild. Do you know what I'm saying? Amber Heard came out. She was crying. A woman's tears to me nowadays don't really mean anything. I'm not even going to lie. And people say it's harsh. I'm like, if I see a woman crying on the TV, on, the, on, on, on social media, I'm withholding judgment. I'm not saying she is, something happened or didn't happen, Just, but I'm going to withhold judgment. Okay, I judgment. see, I see, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So. If we go back a bit, um, can we get some background on you? Yeah, so um, I, I will call myself a social commentator. Okay. I commentate on what is happening socially, um, and that could, that, could, um, that, could do with, that could be to do with, sorry, uh, politics, race, religion, uh, social issues, women, men, uh, relationships, anything social, I would say that I speak on, which is why a lot of the time um, people look at my content, they're like, oh, what's this guy about? And I'm like, I'm about whatever is so what's happening socially. Yeah. So it's like a lot of people kind of want to, they kind of want to streamline you into one box. And I'm like, no, I speak about everything. So yeah, I ruffle feathers within anything that I say because I'm not even gonna lie to you. I just speak the truth and that's just who I am. No, fair enough. And how long have you uh, done this for? I've been doing social media for about maybe seven years now. Mm -hmm. um, initially, I said initially I was debating religion. Um, that, was that was controversial, Islam specifically, but religion in general. Um, and uh, <laughs> that garnered some attention. And yeah. maybe some death threats. Um, <laughs> death threats? Yeah, I got a legitimate death threat. From? Um, the police, they came and saw me and said they have inside information that people are willing to, do, that are willing, people are trying to do me harm. Uh, and um, Was there they, any specifics? Um, they said, the specifics were, they had someone embedded somewhere. Oh, and, right. they, and they got information. Wow. And my name came up <clears throat> and they were like, we've got to give you what they call Osman warning. And that Osman warning says that they've told me, basically, it's very weird. They've told me that I'm in danger. And I'm like, okay, so what are you going to do about it? <laughs> do you know what I'm yeah, saying? And they're yeah. like, well, you have to kind of move differently. Maybe don't take the same roads home and blah, blah, blah. And this goes, this is going back about five years, actually. So I was like, is that it? Is that what you came to me for? Like, yeah. They actually contacted me. And I'm like, so now what? And they were like, well, that's, we've done our job. <laughs> I was like, that's crazy. Yes, yeah, I see. So what you mean. Um, it didn't stop me from speaking on it. Yeah. Um, but what did happen was is that in the spaces that I go into, I kind of get bored very easily, if I'm honest. I can't continually repeat myself. Okay. I feel like I'm in Groundhog Day sometimes. Like if I'm speaking about race and I've said the same thing over and over again mm. for a year and two, I'm just like, I can't keep doing this. It's like the videos are now out there. I tell people, if you want to know what I think about this, the videos are there, yeah, go and look at them. So when people talk to me today about, oh, you used to debate religion. I'm like, yeah, I used to. And they're like, oh, I remember you did. I was like, bro, if you want to know, the video's there, innit? I don't want to keep repeating it. I've already done it. Because I've literally done it for like five, four or five years. No, fair enough. But do your um, opinions on things change then over the years? Um, 
Like from, from five years ago to now? Mm-hmm. Mm. I would call myself somebody who changes when new information comes along. Okay, right. right. Um, I don't like to be stuck. So I'm definitely willing to change, but I'm one of those people that you've got to convince me that the argument is good for, wh- me, to, for me to change my mind. Are you quite logical? Is it based on... It's normally based on logic, rationale, yeah. reason. Um, if things don't make sense, if you're coming to me with your feelings, mm. I'm like... No, I'm not going to change my mind based on your feelings, <laughs> you know what I mean? Because someone else can come to me with their feelings and want me to change my mind. So it has to be logical, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so before you did um, social media, what, what were you doing kind of thing? If you could run, or where did, where did you grow up? Let's start from there. Okay, so I grew up in South London, born and oh, raised. Right. Where about? Um, I was born in Vauxhall, actually. <laughs> All right, right. I was born in Vauxhall, raised, born in St. Thomas's Hospital, okay. um, raised in and around Vauxhall, Lambeth Walk. Okay, right. Um, and then I can't, then I moved to Brixton. I was in Brixton for a few years. And so then uh, I got with my son's mum and then um, moved out of South London. And I've been, I've been progressively getting further and further out of London, <laughs> I'm not going to lie. Um, so, yeah. I'm, is, is there a reason for that or? Yeah, London's too crazy for me, if uh, I'm honest. Yeah. As, I get, as I get older, I think... London's good for the hustle. I don't mind the hustle and bustle. Yeah. But also, uh, there's a part of me that just wants to be chill. Mm. Do you know what I mean? And I think the further you get outside of London, the, the more it becomes a little bit more chill. Um, yeah. So, I'm South London born and bred. Yeah. I go back there occasionally while I'm here today. Yeah. You're welcome. <laughs> oh, actually, <laughs> I'm here today. But, um, yeah. So, this, I, I know the area. So. Nah, fair enough. But are you far from London or not too, ba- not too far? I'm far enough. To get into London within about half an hour. So that's like Kent Essex, yeah. Kent or Essex. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, what did you do then after, you, you know, after? You said before, so, before social media, it's funny because I was a um, professional actor. Nice, nice. I was a professional actor for a number of years um, yeah. in my teenage years. Was on British TV for a while. Um, Anything films. we might have seen? Yeah, there was a there was a show called Family Affairs. It was a it was a soap opera. Yeah, it was on at one o'clock in the afternoon, and six o'clock in the evening. So I was on TV twice a day for two years. Nice. Um, so I'd done that, and then I started doing. I done Casualty. Um, I done. There's so many. Um, I done Channel Four dramas, BBC dramas. Theatre, film, I done 28 Days Later. I don't know if you've seen that. It was a zombie movie. Wow. Um, that I'd done so much and it was like, I was actually poised to go to LA. Okay, That's right. what I was going to do. Yep. And I was about six months out from probably going and then my son was born. Wow. And I was like, ah, <laughs> that's not going to happen. Um, so I stayed and um, got a real job. <laughs> what, what was the I've job? I've got a real job. Um, it's funny because I, I was a personal assistant to very high net worth individuals. Nice, nice. So rich Russian billionaires, rich Arab people, rich Chinese. I was literally like the go-to guy to get them some stuff. Because you realise that people at that level, yeah, they don't just want, they want things that are, that other people can't get so I had to such as um paintings artwork oh, right. um houses planes wow it's a bit of, a <laughs> I bit worked of with pilots yeah. I worked with um realtors I worked with art fairs the whole nine like it was just like whatever kind of they wanted and then a lot of it was for their children as well wow. so their children being children teenagers would want stuff that our teenagers couldn't get, do you know what I mean? So, yeah. um, you know, booking them days at, I don't know, paintballing or renting out the whole space of somewhere. Do you know what I mean? It was just like, I did that for like 15 years. <laughs> that sounds quite exciting though. But how, how did you make the transition? I saw how the other half lived. Do you know what's funny? Um, yeah. Because I've, it's, it's funny, because I've always said to myself, it's funny because the, the camera always finds me, it's always found me because I've been an actor mm. for a very long time. Well, I was. And so it's like, I was always creative. And um, yeah, I just started having ideas because my brain's always ticking. And um, my best friend of like 20 plus years was a videographer. 
Okay, and one day right. he was like, you should put some of your thoughts on camera. You know, we're always talking. Just put it on camera. And I was like, oh, cool. And then he would he just set up his camera and he would just do what you're doing right now behind the camera talking to me. What do you think about that? What do you think about this? And I'd just be like, all right, no, I think this. Da, da, da. And it kind of built up. And then what happened was I went to Speaker's Corner in London. Yeah. Which is a place to go every Sunday to debate everything and anything. And... Um, I kind of found a little home there, like, oh, I can get to debate stuff that I like and pe- talk to people and stuff like that. And then those videos kind of took off, me not realising. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is all right, actually. And so I kind of built up my own channel and just got into social commentating. So nice. it's been a crazy journey. <laughs> I but, think I live yeah. my life in like three phases already, man. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. yeah. But how do you go from being an actor to being a... Um like a personal assistant for, for um, such rich people. I'll tell you the story, actually. It's crazy. I had a best friend who owned a luxury car company. Nice. Well, it's not like a best friend. I had a friend. I wouldn't say best friend. I, had a, I knew a guy who owned a luxury car company. And at that time when I was, jobbing, I was a jobbing actor, I needed jobs in between because jobbing actors don't... We're going back to the 2000s. Yeah. You, we can look now and see the top boys and the all this kind of stuff. And there's a lot of stuff for young black actors. Yeah. And um, when I was growing up, it was like very few and far between. It's funny because I did an actual interview the other day with Richard Blackwood, mm. um, Akemji, um, who's a, a BAFTA award winner, and also a young guy called Samuel. Um, don't let me forget his name because he's going he's gonna, to he's <laughs> gonna piss me off. Oh, Samuel. Ankara. Right? Okay, cool, yeah. Uh, and Akemji in, in, in Deforian, Deforian, he's gone in, I mean Cameroonian. But um, yeah, so I did an interview with all of them because I grew up with all of them. Yeah. Kemji's one of BAFTA. Nice. I grew up with him. I was auditioning with him. Richard Blackwood's Richard Blackwood. Yeah. Actually, Richard Blackwood interviews, uh, like auditions yeah. and stuff. So I just kind of done an interview and kind of got them all and said, guys, what was it like when we were growing up acting differing to um, what it's like now? So, um, yeah, the, the, the story was, to go back to it, was I had a friend who had a luxury car company. I was a jobbing actor. One day I'm at his house. He's on the phone and he was pissed off and he was like, bro, no, you got to go. And he's like, brother, I can't go. I was like, what's going on? He's like, I need someone to drop this rich Arab guy to this casino. All right. And I was like, <laughs> I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> like, and he was like, can you do it? And he was like, yeah. yeah. And I was like, how much does it pay? And he was like, hundred pound a day or so, 110 pound or something like that. He said, but he's going to be there. He's probably going to be there too late. I said, bro, I ain't doing nothing. Yeah. So then um, took the car and it was like S-Class Mercedes and dropped him. And I was like, that was kind of easy. Mm. And, he, and I was like, okay, cool. So you got any more of that? <laughs> and he was like, I was like 110 pound a day. I was like, I ain't got, that's money to me back in the day. Yeah. And, um, and then, yeah, just started doing it built up like a client base, started doing it on the regular. Because yeah. he would call me and be like, bro, I need someone. Bro, I need someone. Have you got, but this guy's in for a week. I'm like, all right, cool. I'll do it for a week. Do you know yeah. what I mean? No, he's in for like a month. All right, I'll do it for a month. And then the more I got to speak to these people, the more you realise that they just want more than someone who to drive them around. Yeah. Like, oh, I want to go to this club. Blah, 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 blah. This restaurant. Can you get me in? And I was like, mm. so I'd have to go to the <laughs> clubs or go to the restaurants and be like, listen, I've got a client who's going to spend a lot of money. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Could you get him a little? And they'll be like, okay, who is he? I'll be like, oh, he's the sheikh of, I don't know, whatever. I'll just make up a name. They'll be like, oh, really? I'll be like, yeah, he's from Qatar, bro. He's like a sheikh. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> they'll be like, all right, cool, come in. And so, yeah, it kind of built up from there. And then mm-hmm. I got to do the whole personal assistant stuff. So what's the craziest thing or weirdest thing that someone would ask for? Um, the craziest thing or weirdest thing someone asked for yeah. was a piece of artwork, which was an old school knife, I think from the Victorian times. All right. Well, a picture of a knife. There was a knife. <laughs> yeah. Right. And they were like, there's an art fair selling this knife and I want <laughs> that knife. And I looked at it and it was like a piece of rusted metal. Yeah. And I looked at it and it was something like 58 grand or something like that. It was Damn. some crazy price. Okay, so I called him. I was like, got a client, blah, blah, blah. They were like, yeah, a lot of people want it, blah, blah, blah. And um, he had to put in a bid and he had to go past the, the bid price. 
And then I had to go and pick it up and I, they gave me this big box. And I, I, he got it to him, he was really excited and he opened it and he got his Victorian knife. And I was like... <laughs> Each to their own, isn't when it? You got, when you're a billionaire, like yeah. 58 grand or however much grand to you ain't really, ain't really that much. But yeah, I saw, the other heart, I saw the other side of life. Yeah. I was in crazy... I've seen the craziest houses. I have seen the craziest... I'm talking about estates. I'm talking about estates where you have to have a golf buggy nice. to yeah. drive to the next part of the estate, to drive to... And I'm talking about in, in the UK as well. Okay, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so a lot of land, yeah. I've been on private planes. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's, it's, it, it, was, it was crazy. It's it was high crazy. living, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it was high living. And I'm like, it's interesting doing it because you get to... They want a lifestyle. And yeah. that lifestyle is opulence, right? And so as someone who's part of the lifestyle, they'll give you opulence so it's like i used to drive like a rolls royce ghost as like a company car i'll drive the rolls royce you know what i'm saying so um yeah it was interesting so what, what did that do for your for your mental like what did that that influence you at all or motivate you um yeah it was motivating but then it was also it was interesting because it made me realize that people are people because okay, right. i'm sitting and chilling with people who um multi-millionaires, billionaires, and yeah. they've got, the, they've just got problems. Same problems that everyone else has got. Okay, right. Wife problems, children problems, their kid got in trouble at school, got found with, I don't know, like his friend and his friend skipped school. It's the, it was the same stuff, but yeah. it's just like a boarding school. Do you get what I'm saying? Or something like that. And I was like, do you know what? I like it, it's motivation, but it also makes me realize that humans are humans. Mm. That's what it made me realize, humans are humans. Well, that's good, that's good. Mm. Yeah, I think we should get into some topics. Let's do it. <laughs> you said uh, men's rights. <clears throat> men's rights. What were your thoughts? I think when it comes to men and the court system, family court system, mm -hmm. I think it's heavily skewed within, um, within the ways of women. Um, I say that being somebody who has not only been through court, as somebody who has interviewed men and also consults men on a monthly basis about their trials and tribulations in the court system. The amount of money that is spent, I think the family court system is a money spinner. Mm. Um, I think the last statistic that from Fathers for Justice was one in four children in the UK are raised without a father, I think it was. Wow. Um, and I think, I, can't, I think it's 200 children a day are taken away from their father by the family court system. I think it was that, don't quote me, but I think that's the last statistic that I, I read. And I was just like, the court system is so heavily skewed towards women is that as soon as fathers enter, they're kind of seen as the evil guy. They're seen as the bad guy. Yeah. Doesn't matter. The mum's always the innocent one. She's always able to cry tears. She's always able to convince the court that she's the one going through the craziness and this guy's a crazy stalker or this guy's done something bad and... And I just think men need more rights within the family court system. Mm. I really do. I think there are a lot of fathers out there. There was a reason why within, I think it was 2008, you guys may or may not remember where uh, Fathers for Justice scaled Buckingham Palace and, and, um, and uh, I think it was Parliament. They yeah. were in like the Batman suit and the Spider-Man suit and they scaled it and they had Fathers for Justice. And I'm like, what would get a man that crazy to, because he could die. That's Buckingham Palace. Yeah, there's, there's many people, of There's snipers there, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, there's, no, there's no word of like the snipers there, but he was that um, frustrated that yeah. he wanted someone to know. And um, yeah, I just think uh, fathers need to have more rights within the court system. Within divorces also, um, it's very easy now with no fault divorces, which came in in April. Of What's this it called, year. sir? No fault divorce. All right, what, what is which that? Which means yeah. you don't have to tell people why you want a divorce. Oh, right. You don't normally need to put down your irrecycle, ir I, I can't speak, um, differences <laughs> yeah. that you have or monetary or adultery or something. Yeah. Now with no fault divorce, it can be no one's fault. Why are you divorcing? It's no one's fault, yeah. just want a divorce. Oh, I see, yeah, yeah. What do you mean? What, what do you mean? Ah, uh, no one's fault, just want a divorce. Divorce has become really easy now. Yeah. You know, and with that, a lot of men are getting their stuff taken away by the system, um, houses, cars, children, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. And um, yeah, I just think, 
I think men need more rights within the court systems that we have. So is that like it, it needs a reform of law? It needs yeah. to change? Yeah, I think there needs to be a, um, a reforming of certain laws. And I, I think they shouldn't be so heavily skewed towards women. And that's not to say that women don't need laws also. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying men shouldn't automatically be seen as the aggressor. Do you, do you have any suggestions? Um, would it be yeah, so? Yeah. I, I would say the evidence. I would say, yeah. I would say the evidence has to be concrete, not just a woman saying, oh, do you know what he done? When I was at home, he was abusive. <gasps> oh, he's abusive. Like, do you know how easy that gets taken? Yeah. Like, oh, he was abusive. They'll write that, oh, he was abusive. She, she said he was abusive. It's just like, but you don't know that. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. you don't know that. Do you know what I mean? And also parental alienation when it comes to men and um, parental alienation is something that is really big where one parent wants to alienate the child or children from the parent. Nine times out of ten, is they want to alienate the, the child from the father. Wow. And yeah. so with that, the mother gets to tell that child and hone that child the way she wants to. And that father always gets, you know, seen as the bad guy, even now, not just from the mother, but also from the child, mm. you know? And so a lot of children are walking around not liking their dad and they don't know why they don't like their dad, but they don't know that it was a mother that done it. It was a mother that made them not like their dad. That manipulation. It was yeah. a manipulation, yeah. do you know what I mean? And so I'm kind of big on the fact that fathers need to have access to their children so that doesn't happen because if we talk about feelings, when a woman feels a certain way about a man, that will extend to the child a lot mm. of the time. A lot of the time when a man feels this way about a woman, he doesn't really extend it to his child. He just thinks he has, talks to his friend or has got a crazy baby mama or blah, blah, blah. Do you know what I'm saying? He doesn't really say, your mum's crazy. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? He doesn't really <laughs> go to the child and say, your mum's got issues. But the women, the women do. Um, case in point, Jada Pinkett right now, right? Mm -hmm with um, Willow Smith, the fact that Willow can write a letter to Tupac, what must have she been saying to her child? Like, why is your child writing a letter to Tupac about yeah. be you being happy? Your trauma, they call, I call it trauma dumping. You're dumping all of your trauma yeah. on that child. And that child now thinks, oh my God, my mum needs to be happy. My dad can't make her happy. <laughs> the dead guy can. And so she's writing a letter to this dead dude. And I'm like, why is your child why does your child know all of this stuff? Do you know what I mean? I think a lot of women um, dump all of their trauma, the way they think and the way they feel onto their children and it gets soaked in and that children starts to walk, that child or children starts to walk around with it. Mm. And um, unfortunately, um, there's a lot of children, I would say, walking around not liking their dad and it's their mother's fault. Damn, yeah. But what do you think of uh, the situation with Jada Pinkett and, and Will Smith? Um, She's come out recently and said, what, we've been separated since 2016 or something yeah. like that. Um, I would say, first of all, Will Smith needs to be watched. Mm. Why? Because, uh, you mean like, this is, suicide a lot of, or? this is a lot of madness mm. going on right now. Mm -hmm. And everyone has their breaking point. Um, so, you know, the fact that this woman can disrespect him so publicly in my personal point of view says to me that she probably hasn't respected him for a while I don't know what their respect looks like and I don't really like to like touch on other people's relationships like that but yeah she doesn't seem like she respects him the fact that <clears throat> she's constantly talking about it we heard about the whole entanglement thing mm -hmm. do you know what I mean and her said. reasoning for that and he was on tv crying and I'm not saying men can't cry or whatever, but it's just like, I, it, it looks like, and I could be wrong, it looks like he's put all of his love and energy into somebody that really doesn't give a damn. Yeah, I see what you mean. That's what it looks I see like. what you mean, yeah. Because the way she treats him, I doubt he would treat, I doubt he will come out and say that, those kind of things about her. And I think when it comes to the Oscars, when he slapped Chris Rock, I think that was like a, I think that was a reaction because he had been, downtrodden for so long that he wanted to get some of his masculinity back mm. and okay. I, you know and it was like I don't condone it by the way it was wrong yeah, yeah. do you know what I mean like it was wrong what he done but he saw a target and he took his 
frustration out on that target. I think you saying that, I think it's wild because actually that means they were separated at the time as well. Exactly. Yeah. But the thing is, when you saw her look, it's like he's always trying to get into her good books. Mm. And he's always trying to figure out what can he do to get her to love him again. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's yeah, like, no, I get that. Yeah. Bro, she don't love you, bro. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's one of those things like, she doesn't love you, she bro. She loves Tupac. She loves Tupac. <laughs> and so does her child. So does oh, your child. Yeah, oh, Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, that's yeah, crazy. Yeah. Like, your child loves Tupac. <laughs> and your child never even knew Tupac. It's like, it's crazy, bro. It's mad. No, it's so true. It's so true. Um, what, what are your thoughts? Because is she relevant? Because she always She's pops relevant. out randomly with, with new information that I'm not sure if, if anyone needs. If you understand what I mean. Yeah, she's relevant now because she's got a book coming out. All oh, right. She's got something to sell. Um, she had the Red Table talk and stuff. And um, she was relevant for a time. Now yeah. it's like, no, she's relevant because she likes drama or because she likes to say stuff. And yeah. Crazy. And she married to one of the most famous actors to ever live. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's like... Mm. Yeah, you're, you're always going to be relevant to a degree because you're married to one of the most famous actors to ever live. Do you know what I'm saying? So what does she do with that? We see what she does with that. Do you know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> That's true. Well, what are your thoughts on marriage while we're here? I think marriage is a great thing. Yep. Um, I, think, um, I think the union between a man and a woman is amazing. Um, I think that marriages now are becoming like businesses more so, and transactions. 50% um, of marriages end in divorce. Uh, transactions in which way? As, as in, in married just for them? Like you're married for, for, if you can give me this, mm. I'll give you that. And if you can give me that, I'll give you that. Which is, which, if I'm honest, relationships have always been transactional. What I think now is transactions gone on steroids. Okay. I think it's just become monetary and it's become for clout. And it's become, oh, I want a great wedding, but I don't really want to work on a marriage. Yeah. So it's that like I'll spend grand on a wedding looking like I love somebody. Mm. And then in five years time, the marriage is done. And you're like, you spent how many grand on that? Like, you can't get that back. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I think marriage is great if people actually adhere to the vows, which is richer to, for richer for poorer to... Death to you part, do you know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah, what, what it's no. intended for, yeah. Yeah, what it's yeah. intended for, do yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't know, I know people to have had three, four marriages. That's not yeah. to death to you part. All your, all, your, all your spouses are still living, do you know what I'm saying? That's like, a lot of death. Yeah, it's a lot of like, <laughs> not unless you kill them all, yeah, you know what yeah, I'm saying? Exactly. But it's just like, yeah, I think marriage is great. I think the union between men and women is great. I also, I also think that in relationships in general, I don't think, I think relationships are evolving as well. In which way? So I don't think that a relationship is just between one man and one woman. Okay, right. What, are you misogynist or <laughs> Misogyn misogynistic? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no. Well, probably. Um, <laughs> but I would say that in, when it comes to relationships, people have to tailor make their relationship. Okay, right. So um, if there's a man or a woman, and you want to have more than one partner, you have to tailor make it. You can't just be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to have, and I'm going to not tell someone. It's yeah. like, they're evolving to the point where women know, this is what the whole side chick culture is about. Oh, I see what you mean, yeah. yeah. Women yeah. know that their man has another woman. And they're open to it now. Yeah. They're open to it. So that's, whereas before it was like something hidden, now it's like something out and open, like it's like, oh yeah, I know he's got, he's got a woman. And it's like, okay, cool, well, Polly, um, polyandries are out now and polygamy is out now and mm -hmm. people can have you know more than one part and I'm just like I guess they're evolving do you know what I'm saying um, would you not say it's reverting back to old times where, where we, people had multiple wives and yeah, this was a normal yeah. thing back then um, I think it's but it's only reverting back to that space for the people that can afford it okay right and right. for the people that understand what it is because <laughs> I've said this many times the majority of women are looking for a certain type of man. They are looking for a top tier man. The baller, the, this guy, the, the, the guy, high, high, value the high man. end man, the high value man mm. or whatever. That's what Kevin Samuels used to call oh, it. Oh yeah, yeah. And um, okay, cool. That man's gonna have a lot of options. If all the women are looking for him. Yeah, it's true. Now what? Now you know, that's why these side chicks, they know they're side chicks because they know that their man is of value. 
They know mm. that a lot of women want that guy. The, a lot of women don't want the guy that works at Starbucks. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? So <laughs> the guy that works at Starbucks is probably going to have one woman. Do you know what I mean? Like, but the guy that's a footballer who, or somebody who, who is a billionaire, who makes a lot of money, women are frying their knickers at him, bro. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah. it's like, I'm not saying he should take it. I'm just saying, as a woman, know that that's what's happening with your man. Do you think that's a woman lowering herself to be with that man? No. Would you, would you think, look at it that way? You, no, because I think when you go back and you go back to human history, you'll find that the people that were in power, the men that were in power had multiple women. But saying that, that was a time when a man was essentially above a woman, wasn't it? What do you mean above? As in the man was... The one that is in power, the breadwinner, the one that would go to yeah. work. A woman didn't even have ed education back then. Yeah, they could, to they some do degree, certain things. Yeah, to some degree. But then, like I said, an, a, a powerful, educated woman—men <laughs> don't want that. Serious? Generally, men don't want a power, power, educated woman. There are some men that do, but men generally don't want their woman on the same level as them or above. Because of what ego or um, ego um, battles. I think, when a, I think when a woman gets a lot of money and power, she feels like she has to battle with men. Okay, she right. feels like she has to be the man's equal. And it's like, men don't want to battle with women because you're still a woman. Do you know what I mean? So it's like, you're allowed to get your money and your power. Don't get me wrong. I don't know women wanting their money and their status or whatever. But I'm like, look, you're going to be... Your, the, the, the amount of men that are going to be at your door mm. uh, and the amount of men that are going to be at the woman who's on the checkout at Asda, who's hot, she's probably going to have more men mm. at her door because more men are probably higher than her, higher earners. Um, they've probably got more status in society and she's looking for that. She's on the checkout at Asda, but she's pretty. And a guy always loves a pretty woman. Doesn't matter whether you're working corporate or whether you work in Asda. <laughs> like, they want pretty women. Do you know what I'm saying? So, if you're a pretty woman who's been in a environment where men have constantly been her equal and she's been battling with them, mm. she has that same attitude and takes it into a relationship. It's just not going to bode well for the man. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Would a man take a woman working at Asda over a over a woman taking a man working at Asda, if you, if you get what I mean. 100%. I've had this conversation many times. I think a woman wouldn't want a man working at Asda generally. A woman's hypergamy is a thing. Women yeah. date up. And you men think men, men can date acro across and down. Right. That's what men do. Men can date across someone on the same level mm -hmm. or they can date someone down. A woman who is making a lot of money and has a lot of status generally doesn't want to date down. So she's like, I'm mm, this broke guy. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. She wants a guy on her level or, or, or more. Would you, would you date down? I always date down. Always? Always date down. <laughs> would, would you date a woman that earns more than you? It's, yeah, I, would date a woman who <laughs> earns more, I would date a woman who earns more than me because I feel like my status as who I am, right, mm. has some kind of, I guess, some kind of currency, let's say. Like a value so, that's not monetary. Yeah. yeah, I have currency that's not... I have monetary currency and then I have currency that's not necessarily monetary. That like value, yeah. Right, I have value in myself. So I may be a man of integrity. I may be a man who's a good um, father or this kind of stuff. So my, my integrity or, or my value is not necessarily just money. So I can date a woman with more money than me. Do you know what I mean? But then the question now becomes, does she want to date a man with less money than her? Mm, mm. That's the question. Do you know what I mean? And a lot of the time, women don't. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? A lot of the time, they don't. And it's not my fault. Do you know what I'm saying? Now, I could earn 80 grand a year. She could earn 150. But what do you think about all these, all these viral videos that are going around now where the woman's like, I need a man to be earning at least 100K, 200K, all it's, this It's stuff. unrealistic. Mm. It's unrealistic because average men don't earn that money. Kevin Samuels already done it. He already, he already gave us the blueprint. He said, he showed the statistics. Average men don't earn 100K. The yeah. majority of people within society are average men and average women, as a matter of fact. And it's funny that average men kind of know their, their status. They know where they are. Like, even amongst their guys, 
guys know the average guy. They know the guy who's a little bit below average. They'll tell him, oh, bruv, you're broke, bruv. Like, get your <laughs> money up, bruv. Do you know? Like, they'll do stuff like that. So yeah. most people are average. It's because hypergamy now is on steroids and dating up has become such a thing now. It's like <laughs> the mind of a woman is very interesting because you can look at Ronaldo because Ronaldo's missus used to be a um, checkout girl in... Mm. I think it was some kind of retail yeah, place, right? Yeah. And now she's and that's how they met, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now she's Ronaldo's girl, and women will take on that and run with it. Yeah. Well, Ronaldo's girl done it. It's like, all right, all right. You're not Ronaldo's girl. First of all, she had something that he wanted, mm. and um, do you have it? Mm. <laughs> I've always asked people like, <laughs> are you even the, the the person that people would want? Yeah. Or are you just saying it? A lot of people ain't the people that people would want. Both the men and the women. Do you get what I'm saying? Like, if we if we look in the in the mirror with ourselves and just chill, we're like, I'm a fucked up person, you know. Like, I can do some <laughs> fucked up shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. ah, I don't know. But would you date you? Mm, mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, a lot of people wouldn't date themselves. Damn. So it's like when they say, oh, "I want to get kind of a hundred k," it's like, I ain't even listening. Yeah, I hear what you're saying. I'm not even listening. A couple of people in the comments are like, "Does, does your dad even make that?" You know what I mean? Like, it's, 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 it's not even that. It's just like, I, there was a viral video the other day of a woman on um, the Blue Therapy show and she was saying a guy that she wants 15K to go to Miami or something. Mm. And I was just like, first of all, like, guys are visual creatures, right? And they weigh things up. Like, guys do things like see a girl's mum and they were like, uh, all right, if she turns out like that, if she's older, like, <laughs> that's all right. That's all right. Yeah, that's yeah, all right. Yeah, yeah, she's yeah. all right. But this woman was like 15K and she had on all of this makeup and this wig. Mm. And I was like, you take off that wig and that makeup, love. Like, are you worth 15K? <laughs> like, I'm just being realistic. Like, are I saw you it, worth yeah. it? Yeah, it, it are was you four, worth it? Four day holiday. Four day holiday. Yeah, and that's wild. Like, nah, you're probably not. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? And it's just like, women over inflate who they are. Whereas men generally tend to, some, they tend to just be realistic. But uh, I know my, I know my, you know what I mean? I, I know what I can buy, I know what I can't buy. Yeah. I can take you on holiday, but it won't be 15K. Do you know what I'm saying? Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? But women want this extravagance and they just, they, I don't know, they overinflate themselves sometimes. Is it because they can? But you know what it is? It's because they've, sorry, it's because a lot of women have had sex with, High tier guys. Mm. When you have sex with ballers and guys, it's, we um, come, we kind of spoil the market because we'll have sex with anything. <laughs> guys will have sex with a two, bro, if she's got a nice bum. Mm. I'm just saying, a guy will have sex with a girl who's a two. She's got a nice bum, mm. and so that two thinks, oh, "Raw, he was a hundred k earner. I can bag that." No, you can't. <laughs> now, no, you can't. You can get him to fuck you. Excuse my language, but. Mm. You can't bag him. He's not going. You're not. That's not going to be your man. And so they, because women's currency is attention, um, their currency is attention. That's how they gain their gas. Because it's like attention. It's like putting coins in the machine. It's like attention, attention, attention. That's why they're constantly looking for it online. They're constantly looking for likes. You reckon? Constantly, yeah. Women are constantly looking for likes. And it's like the more attention they get, the more gas they get, and the more they can delude themselves. And I think a lot of the time, men are deluding a lot of women by giving them attention. Like they're some kind of, I don't know, supermodel. And it's like, she, bro, she's av you know she's average, but you want to fuck her. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> you're going to gas her up. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like, ah, uh, I get it. Uh, some women just, I don't know, they have a warped sense of self sometimes. So, so you're saying that men feed it, right? Men, men yeah, feed men their attention. Do, a yeah, lot of yeah. men feed women's attention. Yeah, like, yeah. if you look online, there's a lot... Like, if you go to the comment section of a woman's Instagram video or whatever, it'll be all heart eyes from men. Like, oh my God, I wish I could have one night. Oh my gosh, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you're gorgeous. But men just gas these women up, bro. Like, yeah. it's not women in the comment section of them. But like they, I, yeah. Sorry, go on. But they, they want this attention? Is it because they're through what they post or...? Yeah, they want it because... Um, and they know how stupid men are. Mm. I'll be very honest. I think women know how stupid men are. I think the fact that a woman can be on TikTok now, being an NPC, 
doing that. Ooh, yeah, that's wild. Yeah. Ooh, and making money. I'm like, men are fucking dumb, bro. Like, I'm so, <laughs> sorry. Like, men are stupid. There's no, I'm, that is that is me. Like, and she knows that. Yeah. She's making money off it. I'm like, it's not women donating to this woman. It yeah. is men. And men are fucking stupid. Men, if OnlyFans wouldn't exist if it wasn't for men. These women, ha- it, men are stupid. When it comes to women, men turn stupid. Yeah, but do you think they, they just don't care? Or, because I think sometimes they might, they might know that they're spending this money and stuff, but. Yeah. Or do you think it's like these low lives at home that would never get women? It's a, I think a lot of it is men that don't get women. Mm. Um, that's not to say that men that get women don't do it but yeah. I'm saying generally yeah. I'm saying probably the, if the you majority. look at the majority of the men it's probably men that don't get women yeah. do you get what I'm so saying so this is their way to get interaction it's with their women, way to yeah. get interaction with women mm. right and most, of, most people that probably watch uh, sorry that probably watch porn are probably men who don't get much but then we live in a society that's very hypersexualized so that, that could be wrong mm. but I'm just saying a lot of the time Men is, yeah, men are the reason. <laughs> Sad men are the reason. Um, what do you think about OnlyFans? OnlyFans is the biggest friend zone in the world. Yeah? The biggest friend zone. It is where you as a man, sorry, you as a man are never going to sniff this woman's vagina. <laughs> you're never going to touch it. You're never going to feel it. You're never going to know what it smells like. You're never going to know what it, you're going to know, you're going to know anything about this woman, but you're going to give her money. Mm. That's friend zone. Subscription as well. You're subscribing. That's what happens in the friend zone. Mm. It's these men that have these best women, best friends. Just my bestie. Right? And he spends all this money on her in the hope that he'll get that chance. It's the OnlyFans is the hugest friend zone in the world. But do you think they think they're going to get that chance? No, it's like, it's their way of interacting. It's their way, when it comes to OnlyFans. Yeah. OnlyFans, it's their way of interacting with women that they could never get a chance with. Mm. These women would walk by you on the street, bro. Yeah. Like, these women are, like, really pretty and they've done their hair up and this this, this guy who just works at Starbucks, bro. Do you know what I mean? Like, she <laughs> yeah. just walked past him. She wouldn't even acknowledge him. But in that instance, he gets to interact with a woman like that. Yeah. And so, yeah, it's just a friend zone where women make money. But do you look down on the woman or, or you, up, you think it's, it's a good job? Say again? Do you look down on women that do OnlyFans or do you think it's a good Sex profession? Sex work to me isn't work. It is, I mean, you can say it is in the oldest profession, it's like prostitution is the oldest profession in the world, right? Would, would, you see, would you say it's prostitution? Of course it is. You're giving, you're showing, you're giving sex for money. So they're selling their body? You're selling your body. All oh, right, yeah. You know, uh, uh, OnlyFans is sex work. It's, it's not mm. work to me, it's you just selling your body. And if you think um, you you up your value by selling your body, it's never happened throughout time with women, ever. The more you've sold your body is the less that men have given you value. So it used to be virginity, right, back in the day. Mm. That means you're untouched. Mm. Every man's looking for the untouched woman, right? Yeah. Now it's like, sorry, but 100 men have touched you. <laughs> nah, I'm all right. I'll touch you. But that is it. It's like, it's not like, you're not going to be your wife. Like, what? It's easy touch. Do you know what I mean? So like I said, men are easy like that. Yeah. Like, do you know what I mean? So a lot of these women have gassed themselves off the fact that they've got subscriptions from men. But does it disgust you or anything? Or, or you, it's fine, you don't mind? Like, you think they can, they can women do, can do what they want? World. You can do what you want. I'm, yeah. just not pay, I'm just not giving you my money. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm not giving you that attention. You can't come to me and say, oh, do you know what? And I say to you, what's your job? And you say, oh, OnlyFans. And I'm going to be like, great, let's, let's get married. It's like, no, you've got a hundred men looking at your vagina right now, like, tonight. It's like, no. <laughs> it's like, I, I don't want you to be my wife. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah. You know, that's not to say that there aren't women that can get wifed, but for me, the men that do, in my personal opinion, are quite sad. And I just think the men of this day and age are quite, I think they're lost. Mm. I think the men have lost their manhood in these days and times. And um, they don't know what manhood is. Um, I think they're floundering. Um, I think even when it comes to the Red Pool space, there's a guy called John Zerka. Um, and he's just a cokehead. He oh, says right. it himself. He's just like, he does coke. He's got quite a lot of followers, doesn't he? He's got a la- load of followers. Mm, mm. He's just, like, just a crazy cokehead. And he's just like, is this your lot's king? Like, is this... 
Oh, the I guy. see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. Like, this is the guy. This is the guy that you guys are following. Yeah. And it's like, he'll be <clears throat> right like a broken clock twice a day <laughs> when he speaks, right? But that doesn't mean he should be your king. Do you get what I'm saying? And it's mm -hmm. like, for men to follow, for me, for men to follow the young guys of society, to follow a man like that, to me, it's sad, if I'm honest. I think it's sad. So do you think men, uh, when you say men, you, are we mean talking about young men growing up? Or? Yeah, young men. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, grow, like, like men in their early 20s or, do you know what I mean? Like establishing themselves as men. So you think they're lost and they're looking for someone to follow? They're looking for someone to follow because a lot of them don't know what manhood is. A lot of them, remember, mm. we live in a generation that we're told where manhood is wrong, you know. We're misogynistic. I lived for a time, I'm a little bit older, I lived for a time when we got told, be more in touch with your feminine side. Mm. I, I, I lived through the time where the effeminization of men started, kind of st started like metrosexual, this thing that you just yeah. call metrosexual. And it's just like, you guys are like chipping away at like the manhood. You're chipping away at the manhood. And now it's like <laughs> men no longer want to be men. They want to be women. You have the trans movement. Now. You have a whole bunch of men, <laughs> right? <laughs> Biological who now want to be women. So do you think that's why these male figures are doing so well? Like Andrew Tate, for instance. Yeah, because, because they needed something. He, yeah. There was a void. That's why Kevin Samuels done so well. Yeah. There was a void. There were men that did, well, they were floundering. They didn't really... That's, oh, that's okay. It's okay because I have these feelings. Mm. I have these men feelings, but they, I'm told that I'm not allowed to have them. I'm told that I'm supposed to be more like a woman. But you said you know? woman feel. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the thing is, I know but, you no, but it's true because men, <laughs> yeah. men feel like it's okay to just talk to a man straight. Mm. That's how we talk. Yeah. Right? I'm not going to be like, oh, how's he going to feel about this? Is he think I'm going to be offending him? That's why men can banter each other. Yeah. Men can talk about their shoes, mm. their hair, your weight. <laughs> they cuss each other out all day. Cuss yeah, each yeah, other yeah, out yeah. all day long because they're not <laughs> thinking about the feelings, right? But that's how men interact with men. Do you know what I'm saying? And when men are going, no, you can't do that. You've got to think about that. I know she's got a knobbly knee. You're not allowed to say anything about her knobbly knee. He's like, oh, knee looks fucked. No, no, you can't say that. <laughs> you, like, you can't say that. Her knee looks fucked. No, you can't say that. And it's like, but that's how we speak. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? So, Andrew Tate's and uh, Kevin Samuels of the world gave men a, um, an outlet to be men. So what, what was their outlet or who did they follow before social media? Like I said, I think they were just floundering. I think they were just like, okay, right. just kind of winging it. Yeah. Like men are winging it. Or, or is it because maybe like, does it go back to like lack, lack of fathers nowadays? Lack of fatherhood. And now, now you're going to social media. You, you, you can go to lack of fatherhood. Mm. You can go to... A feminization. I think it's 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 been like a it's like it's been multi layered. Yeah. So you got a lack of fatherhood, you got a feminization, then you got the the systems that we're in as men being run by women. So that if you go to teachers, mostly teachers are women. If you go to uni, mostly the, the all of the, the 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 faculties are mostly women. Then you go home to a single mum. That's more female energy, and then you go and look at society. Society says that you being a man is misogynistic and bad and blah, blah, blah. You, mm. You've been under constant assault for years with your manhood. Why do you think so many men now are choosing option to be women? Mm. I'm oh, not, I'm right. not, why? why? So, because yeah. your manhood is bad. And I'm not saying, it's not happening on a conscious thing. It's happening on a subconscious level now. <clears throat> because so, you, you've got teenagers, men that are still teenagers saying, oh, you know what, I want to be a woman. You haven't even you haven't even finished puberty yet, bro. Mm. What are you talking about? You want to be a woman? You haven't been a man, yeah. You haven't even been a man yet. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean you want to be a woman? <laughs> and so yeah, so um, yeah, this attack on manhood has been um, yeah, it's been very interesting. I think that's interesting, yeah, because I think you know I don't know if, you know in the last generation when I was growing up it was you know be a man you know wipe your tears be a man kind of thing like that. But you don't really hear that nowadays, you know? You don't really hear that no. being said to kids. No. Um, Do you think that kind of thing is needed? I think there's a balance. Men need to understand how to engage, because men do have feelings. They need to understand how to engage their feelings and when to engage their feelings. But they can't live there all the time. They can't, yeah. A man can't be run by his feelings. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? He's allowed to have them, and allowed to express them when they need to be expressed, but he can't be run on them. And I think now, where being, men are being told to run with your feelings, which is why a lot of men don't know how to be 
quote unquote men anymore, which mm. is why they're opting to be women. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Like they're entering, entering, entering female sports arenas and beating the women. And do you know what I'm saying? All this kind of stuff is like, well, I'm not allowed to be a, I'm not allowed to be a man. I guess I'll be a woman now. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's yeah. like, yeah. So yeah, I think man, there's been a concerted effort to um, quell manhood for the past maybe four decades. Do you think, and, and this yeah. is the result. Do you think it's starting to change now? Because I know a politician said it the other day. Like they said, look, gender roles are gender roles. You know, as in yeah. a man is a man, a woman's a woman. And they kind of said it straightforward. That's the first time I heard a politician mm. say it in that way. Men are having, they're starting to have enough now. All right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Donald Trump is just coming on TV saying, a man is a man and a woman is a woman. And if I get in, yeah, there's going to be two <laughs> genders, right? <laughs> men are starting to have enough now. They've had enough of... Um, Kel, um, cuddling like the, the whole feelings thing yeah. it's like no it's gone too far now guys now you've got people saying that they can be wolves and like all kinds of stuff do you know Labels, what I mean like yeah. when do the feelings <laughs> stop and when do facts start coming back into you know what I mean into society and so this is what happens when you live in a society based on feelings mm. you are allowed to be anything that you want no don't say that he feels that way don't say that she feels that way what do you mean? You can't be a dustbin. Well, she can because that's how she feels. On a Tuesday at five o'clock, she could be a dustbin. It's like, what are you talking about? Like, what is going on? Like, it's, it's like we live in like La La Land or something. I don't know. Yeah. Or then maybe I'm the crazy one because in the world where, because I've always said crazy is just the majority of people saying it. That's all right. that crazy is. So if the majority of people say that, um, a man being a dustbin is crazy, then he's crazy. But if everyone's a dustbin, the people that don't want to be a dustbin is crazy. Oh. <laughs> do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Because you're like, what do you mean? Uh, yeah. you, you don't want to be a dustbin, bro. <laughs> but it's the, we're in the majority. So he feels that, oh my God, I've got to conform to everyone else. I've got to be the dustbin. So crazy is just as many people say. You think, people. you think kids are quite confused nowadays? Um, are, parents, are parents the problem? Are parents the problem? Yeah, because a lot, a lot of parents will tell a kid, yeah, you could be a tree, you can be a dustbin, yeah, you can be... Yeah, you can be anything you want. A lot of parents are, but a lot of parents are pushing back, mm. you know? I think, it, you know, you have that kind of conservative liberal thing going on in America. Um, I think a lot of parents are pushing back. I know I couldn't... I couldn't tell my mum growing up that I wanted to be what I wanted to be. She would tell me what I was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're not that. This is what you are. This is what's going down. So... Um, yeah, sometimes you can blame parents, but sometimes you can't. I don't think you can all the time. Well, oh, fair, enough. fair mm, enough. I don't think you can all the time. So with, with all these changes and stuff, what are your thoughts on the LGBTQ plus community? Um, I've spoken about it. Um, mm. I've always said the L means lesbian. Mm -hmm. The G means gay. Yeah. What does the T mean? The T means trans. trans. Mm. Right? So... But we said it doesn't make sense because what you're saying essentially is that men can be women and women can be men. That's what this whole gender saying. So that means a man can be a woman and a woman can be a man. Mm -hmm. But if I can be a woman, that means I can be a lesbian. <laughs> yeah. And now I'm a lesbian. Your body, but then isn't that taken away from what lesbians really are? Mm. It's two women. Do you know what I mean? And if two women decide to be men and say, oh, we're together, isn't that taken away from what gay people really are? Mm. Like, so it doesn't make any sense. So it's like, it, it folds, it implodes upon itself. I don't have a problem with lesbian people and I don't have a problem with gay people. My issue is when the feelings start coming in and men start saying they're women and women start saying that they're men. Because even the B says bi, which means <laughs> yeah. that there's two. Bi means two. So there's men and women, there's male and female, there's gay and lesbian. What is this other stuff? Now you've got the I, the A, the plus. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm just like, oh, I don't. Yeah, I've, I'm just like, you're allowed to, I don't have any problem with gays and lesbians and bisexual people. I actually don't. My problem is when people start saying that you, as a biological man or woman, you can change your gender to something else. That's a problem. Because now, where that goes is, that means my son can be in a toilet 
and then a woman can walk in or a girl can walk in or your daughter's in a toilet and my son can walk in with his penis swinging. You don't want my son in your toilet. You don't want that. And just like I don't want your girl in my son's toilet. I don't want that. So can we not do that, please? <laughs> like, also, like, say that. <laughs> can we not do that, please? It's like, yeah. no, we can't because now you're offending someone. But what happens if a man who's turned into a woman walks into a men's toilet? Doesn't that look weird as well? It's, it's weird. <laughs> as a man, you'll be like, why is there? But if you see as a man, it's like... Oh, it's just like you probably know, innit? Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. it's just a trans or whatever. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Men deal with these kind of things differently. Uh, so I saw one of your posts that said black women are out of control. They are out, absolutely they are out of control. Um, black women in the West are absolutely out of control. You can go to the Sukianas of the world. You can go to the Sexy Reds of the world. You can go to the Jada Pinkets of the world, right? <laughs> Black women are absolutely out of control. And the ratchet culture is taking control of a lot of Black women of the West. For some reason, it has taken hold more so in the Black cultures. You, I, I made a video about these Black women going to Elmina's castle in Ghana, mm -hmm. twerking on the top of the castle. Now, Almina's castle is a sacred place mm -hmm. where black people were taken from there and they never ever saw their parents again, their children again, their families again. They were put on them boats and they were gone. And that place, when people go there, they cry real tears. Mm. And you're going to twerk there and say, oh, this is for the ancestors. Like, no one else would do that. Like, a bunch of Muslims wouldn't go to Mecca mm. and twerk, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Like a, a bunch of Jewish people wouldn't go to the Wailing Wall and twerk. Yeah. But it's like black women in the West specifically do all of this type of debauchery behaviour. Now we've got bloody this new thing called UK baddies. And I'm watching it and I'm just like, oh, for fuck's sake. What, what is black, this? What was UK baddies? UK ba <laughs> baddies is a bunch of fat black women, <laughs> right? Just with a gay best friend right and they're just <laughs> arguing and fighting with everyone and i'm just like is this what we've is, is this what we've like come to but what is it a group a podcast or like it's a, a... It's, a, it's a it's a reality show oh right right okay yeah now yeah. a lot of these women on there ain't baddies i don't know <laughs> like, a lot of them have got got weight issues <laughs> are they not thick no nah, they've got weight issues they look like michelin men and it's like <laughs> they're out here saying that they're baddies. And I'm just like, listen, I can't. If this is what it deemed, if this is what black women want for their entertainment, mm. um, no other culture does this. Um, I've said every culture in the world has their underground, has their underworld. Mm. The Spanish do, the Japanese do, the Muslims do, the Christians do, the Vatican do, the whoever, just name it. They've all got that underground, underworld, people that they, they know exist, but they don't really talk about it. The yeah. problem with black people is they, they've taken their underground and their underworld and they've raised it to the surface and said, that's what being black is. So it's being embraced. It's being embraced. The underworld and Empowered. the underbelly and all the underculture and all the nastiness is being embraced as the top tier. And I'm like, no, it ain't. So do black women in the West, um, are they out of control? In my personal point of view, hell yes. Um, do I love black women? Yeah, I do. But... A lot, for a lot of black women, they can't fathom the fact that I can love black women and say that you're out of control at the same time. They feel like if I say you're out of control, then I hate black women. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And it's like, <clears throat> I don't. I'm saying it because I, I don't think you should be like this. And I think every culture on the world, in the world, sorry, has men saying to the women, stop, stop that stupidness, stop that stupidness, right? Mm -hmm. We can't be like that. <clears throat> and if the women are out of control, a lot of the time you can see that the society's out of control. If, the, yeah. if a bunch of Jewish women were just out of control, you'll be like, what, what the Jewish guys can't keep their women in, in check? Mm. If a bunch of Muslim women are out of control, throwing off their hijabs on the street twerking, you'll be like, yo, well, the Muslim guys can't keep their women in check. If a bunch of Chinese women were doing it, you would say that, well, a Chinese, but a bunch of black women can do it and no one doesn't think that the, that the society's out of control. No, it's out of control. Would you not call it feminism? Or do you think the idea of feminism has gone too far? No, I think the idea of feminism took a hold in the black community like no other community. <laughs> it didn't even take this hold in the white community. And feminism wasn't even meant for black women. Feminism was a fight with, for white women against white men. Mm -hmm. Because white women at that time 
wanted equal rights. At that time, mm -hmm. black men and women were still being oppressed. They still had their own fight as for, for quote unquote, human rights, yeah. for quote unquote, civil rights. That's what their fight was. Your fight was for civil rights. So feminism had nothing to do with black uh, women. And I always say to black women, they say, oh, men were oppressive. I said, okay, when it started, what, what were black men doing to oppress you at that time? Black men weren't keeping you out of the workplace. Black men weren't underpaying you because they weren't in those positions to do that. So who was your fight with? You took on the white woman's fight with her white man and acted like the black men done it. And I'm like, it wasn't us. So for some reason, they've taken that feminist trope and they run with it. So you think all these new uh, artists and female rappers that give off that ratchet vibe, but you know, um, it's not it's not seen as as empowerment. It's seen as what? It's not seen as empowerment. It's seen as fucking dirty and disgusting. <laughs> Sorry, but it's like it's not. Imp there's nothing empowering about throwing your vagina every year. There's nothing <laughs> empowering about saying that you're a whore. I said, are they not getting the bag? Yeah, they are getting <laughs> their bag, but it's like. You didn't become, quote-unquote, free and independent to be a whore, did you? If that's what you said, that's what you wanted to be free for, then it's like, well, we should have fucking kept you in the kitchen then. You know what I'm saying? Like, what, you just got free to be a whore? That, what do you mean? Like, so that's what you were, you were sitting in the kitchen saying, oh my God, these men are so oppressive. I wish I could be a whore. I wish I could give my vagina to every single person that I see. No, that's not what you get your freedom for. So it seems like, no, these women are not, Free. They're not, they think they're free, but they will tell you themselves that they're giving themselves a jail sentence. Mm. Men don't see them as valuable anymore. But you, you don't see it as like, all right, so some people might argue that, you know, the same way men got, you know, get rich quick schemes as in they might go be a drug dealer and, and all these things there. Obviously, I know it's completely different, but it's seen as, as, as something, you know. That's bullshit too. <clears throat> drug dealer? Yeah, of course it is. Mm -hmm. well, it's, well, your it's, thoughts? It's, it's debauchery behavior, like I said. Black people's, un we've all got drug dealers. Mm. Every nation has drug dealers. The, yeah. Al the Albanians, the, you know what I mean, the Italians. The, the, but no one raises it to the surface. Oh, and, so says, you, yeah. and says, this is what is the culture. Albanian culture is about selling drugs. No, it's not. We don't, I don't know what Albanian culture is, but I know I don't sit there and think, yeah, Albanians are drug dealers, you know? Yeah. I don't think that, but I'm sure they have drug dealers. Probably a lot of them. There's a lot, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you don't think that. But when you think of black people, you think of that. And oh, I'm saying, so, yeah. we now have the power in this day and time to change our narrative and to change what we look like. And if we continue pushing the things that are detriment to us, because I've got a son and he's 11. Mm -hmm. I don't want my son being thought of as a drug dealer. I don't want him being thought of as a black boy. I don't want him being thought of as a drug dealer. Mm. If I had a daughter, I wouldn't want her being thought of as some kind of ratchet person who's like sexy, sexy red. I wouldn't want them being thought of like that. Do you know what I mean? So both the men and the women's culture of debauchery is pushed to the surface. So pushing the wrong narratives. Yeah, we're pushing yeah. the wrong narratives. Now, <clears throat> yes, there is a concerted effort on the, you, the sides of the record companies and people in power to push that because it sells. Yep. But where also in powers, America specifically have the most black millionaires. So you guys can't come together, do something. You, uh, you're too individualistic. Oh, I've got, I've, got, I've got millions. Yeah, that's cool, bro. I'm good for you, as a matter of fact. You've done it, you made it. What are you doing now? Mm. Because your image, when you walk into a room with people that are non-black are gonna look at you like, oh, he's one of those, isn't it? You know, drug dealers. And that's why I push for the forward movement of black people worldwide. I don't yeah. care if you're from Zimbabwe, America, anywhere. If you're black and you're doing something positive, push it. Mm. Because it makes it easier for me. Because <clears throat> then when I walk into a room, people think, oh, he's, he looks like, okay, he's not necessarily gonna be this crazy drug dealer, dude could have a good idea actually in his head, mm. could be a good businessman. But if we don't push those things, then we'll always be looked at as the um, crazy drug dealers, man. Right, so do you think um, black people are contributing to the stereo negative stereotypes still? A lot quite, of them quite are. A lot, yeah. a lot of them are. And um, that needs to change. I'll say it, a lot of the, 
a lot of people on social media push it too. Yeah. Mm. Probably because it's, you know, seen as cool or... Seen as cool. Because yeah. um, <clears throat> to be cool is to be anti-establishment and anti-social. Mm. That's what's cool. So it's not to be part of the establishment. Now, I understand people have the problems with the establishment. Do you know what I'm saying? But it's like, how anti-establishment are you going to be? Because what you do notice is that the people that were anti-establishment and anti-social and F the system and I'm a rapper, as they grow up, <laughs> they start getting into business. They start getting, they start rubbing shoulders with this person. And I'm like, hang on a minute. Weren't you the guy that used to be like, yeah, I'm selling drugs and packs and all this kind of stuff. And it's like, now, now you realise that where the, where the money and the leverage is. The yeah. money and the leverage is not necessarily just in selling debauchery behaviour. Mm. I hear you. Um, is there enough unity in the black community then? And, and where is the black community? There is no black, <laughs> there is no black community. No? no. What, what about black Twitter? Um, yeah, they'll turn on themselves if someone, someone will get cancelled if mm. they say the wrong thing. Um, there is no black community. There are pockets of black community. Okay, right. I would say that there are pockets of places where black people can be themselves and do things for black people, but can go in as a conglomerate. Yeah. There's no black community, not in my personal point of view. Um, I think that the black community is a um, smokescreen for a lot of people to make money and act like they care about certain things, and they don't. Um, there are people that talk about the black community while selling drugs to black people. <laughs> there are people that talk about the black, caring about the black community while uplifting people who do the debauchery behavior. Like, if this is what your community is, if, if this is what the community is, then I don't want to be a part of it. Like, I'll be honest. Mm. But I've always <laughs> said I created my clan for a reason. So I created my clan, who were a bunch of like-minded men yep. who think the same, who have the same agendas, who sign contracts with one another, who go into business with each other, right? I created my clan for a reason, because I know that I can rely on them. I can't necessarily rely on the quote-unquote community, right? So those are the people that if push comes to shove, I can rely on. Mm. I can't rely on the quote-unquote community. The community, the black community, with, with my stuff that I've been saying here today are cancelling me because I'm talking about black women or I'm talking about black men or I'm saying this about this. They're very um, emotionally led. Mm. And so I can't rely on people who are necessarily emotionally led. I need people who are a little bit more stoic, a little bit more logical, <laughs> a little bit more forward thinking. And yeah, so that's why I created my clan. Just a random one then. What, what's the most famous contact you got on your phone? Who, who would it be? I can't <laughs> say that name. No? You can't, you can't give us a little clue then? A little clue? And the um, viewers will work out the rest. <laughs> or a profession? Or? There's, a, there's a couple of actors. Yeah, okay. There's a couple of people within the government. All right. Interesting. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, is Tommy Robinson racist? Um, what, last time I spoke to him, mm. I said to Tommy Robinson that he sits on the scale of racism. See, I believe racism is a scale. Okay. Um, what is in like, you could be a little racist, a lot yeah, of Yeah, I believe yeah. that people can like, want all blacks to go back to Africa, mm. right? And then I believe that there are people that are just ignorant because they weren't raised around certain people. Yeah. Um, and I said to Tommy Robinson, I believe that he sits on that scale. Um, I said, I don't believe you're some Hitler um, type, you know, Nazi, yeah? But I said, I believe that there's a lot of ignorant stuff that you say and you don't think about it. Mm. Um, um, so is he a racist? It's still an opinion. I said, yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah. But he's not, to me, a racist that will be like, you blacks got to go back to Africa and we'll put you on the ships mm. or we'll lynch you. I don't, nah, he's, I don't think he's that type of racist. Um, there are those type of racists that exist, <laughs> yeah. but I just don't think he's one. Ah, oh, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. And um, you worked with Pell in the past, haven't you? Yeah, Pell. Yeah. Yeah, we've seen we've seen a podcast. Mm -hmm. um, 
Would you say she's racist? Or because I've heard I've heard a couple of things. I was no, I don't, I don't think I think again she's ignorant. I okay, spoke right. about this the other day. I think yeah. I think she is engaged in a culture that mm. she doesn't understand. And so if I engage in Chinese culture and I don't really understand it, but I love Chinese people, I think Chinese people are dope. I'm probably gonna say some stuff at some point in time. Chinese people are gonna be like, what? Mm, mm. If you ain't done your if I ain't yeah. done my research. Yeah. Now, it's for me to know what the culture's like so I don't step on people's toes. However, mm -hmm. if you couple that with the fact that she's ignorant and also she doesn't care to change, now it's like, mm, you could, I, I won't say she's... Like I said, I don't think she wants black people to go back to Africa and blah, blah, blah. But I think I use it, when I've spoken about it, I use the term colonizer and colonist. Okay, right. Because there's a mindset. If someone walks into this room with all people of color mm -hmm. and they're white, they may have a colonist. They may feel like they're the ones that are going to supposed to be in power. It's not because they want you to all go back to where you come from, but they walk in with a certain arrogance and a certain ego and you're like, hang on a minute, like, what's that all about? Do you know what I mean? But can you see that? Can you see it straight away? Uh, no, you ca it happens when certain things happen. All oh, right, right, right. Yeah. It happens when certain situations come about. Yeah. So if, I don't know, if we all get locked in this room or whatever and we all have to survive for the next 10 days, mm. you know, you may see certain traits come out and then you're like, oh, hang on a minute. Like, <laughs> <laughs> where'd that come from? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I don't think she's racist. So I would just you think she's quite ignorant. Oh, so you wouldn't put her on the scale. Like, like she's on the scale. Oh, that. she's on the scale, mm. yeah? On the, on the scale of racism? She's on the... But yeah, like the low it, end? I, th I think it starts from, like, ignorance mm. to, like, Hitler-type <laughs> Nazis. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I just think yeah. it's, it's... Everyone's on the scale. Yeah. Even black people are on the scale when it comes to other people. I think everyone's on the scale. Okay, Everyone, right, right. to some degree, has a level of prejudice in them. Mm. Doesn't matter who you are. I don't believe you can be raised in the society and not have a level of prejudice in you, regardless of who you are. I, I, know, yeah. I think if, you've, if you've, you've thought about some shit that you wouldn't say out in public, you, everyone has. I think, yeah, everyone has their own opinions on different cultures and- Exactly. Or they know certain things that you exactly. wouldn't- Yeah, yeah, okay. I Which is you. normal to me. Mm. So yeah. So what's, what's the story of Pearl? Because you used to work together, right? We used to work together. Um, we worked together for over a year, or about a year. Mm. And um, I was there from the inception of the podcast that she had. Yep. Uh, what, what was that called at the time? It was called the pre-game. Okay, right. Yep, yep. The pre-game podcast. And um, it got to a point where I worked with her so much that we decided to work together on our own podcast, which was mm. called The Great Area. And um, she got new management. This is like this is like the shortened version. Yeah, I've gone into it. She got new management, and <clears throat> after she got the new management, things started to change uh, that I didn't like. Such and as what? Um, just uh, content-wise, like I think she got a little bit more. Um, oh, because she did the interview, right? Yeah. No, she yeah she got a little bit more inflammatory with the content. Right, right. I think she. Go, you know when someone just pokes people, you know you poke people, poke people, and I'm like, mm, yeah. what are you doing it? Like, she's poking, do you know what I mean? And so it's like, I think she got that to get the reaction of the people going crazy and then oh, for throwing people yeah. out and then that, mm. that kind of stuff. And I was like, mm, I saw that because I saw it from the beginning. It was, if you go back and see, it's just us sitting around a bloody table in the house, yeah. with mics, wires everywhere. Do you know what I'm saying? So it's like to go from that and then to see it, Obviously, things have to evolve and things have to change. I totally get it. Um, but yeah, then it kind of crescendoed with the Nick Fuentes interview mm. with the, the racist He's a racist, America. yeah. yeah. Um, the admit, I always say the admitted, admitted racist. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's not like a Tom... People say Tom Robinson's racist. Tom Robinson doesn't say he's racist. He's like, I'm racist, no. Mm. Oh, he wouldn't, he wouldn't admit it then? Oh, right, Tom, right. No, Tom Robinson doesn't say he's racist oh, at all. Okay, right, right. Okay. Not at all. He would not do it. Um, and if he thinks that about himself, then fine. But... Nick Fuentes was like, yeah, I'm racist. <laughs> like, I'm like, okay, yeah, that's different. Do you know what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, after that, I was like, she tried to offer me a contract. Mm. 
And I was just like, nah, you know, I'm going to be out. And the thing is, I knew I was leaving about three, four months before, if I'm honest, before I did leave. Had I had a change of heart or? Um, no, no, no. Like, I was just making my exit strategy. All oh, right, right, yeah. Like, I was just making my exit strategy. And um, that one pushed me over the edge. I was like, nah, it's time to go. Do you know what I mean? Because I just saw certain things. She employed mostly black staff. No, all black staff, as a matter of fact. No, I'm going to say mostly black. All so black why, staff. why was it all black staff? I don't know. You have to yeah. ask her. Oh, so, okay, right. So, Do you know what I'm saying? Like, and yeah. it's just like, you would employ all black staff and then have a racist on and laugh with the racist. It's a bit awkward, isn't it? It's like, bro, yeah. like, yo, don't take the piss. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. That's a bit crazy. And, um, but it goes to show the ignorance and it also goes to show the, dis- not so much disdain, but the fact that you don't even give a damn. Like, you're gonna do, I'm going to do my thing and I'm going to be allowed to do whatever I want. It's like, you've got all black staff. What, what's the hiring process? Do you know? Like, what, what was, how did it... Um, <laughs> she, it's, it's through a lot of... It's through a lot of... Um, One of her friends or something. Yeah, like, friends and knowing someone who, um, like, used to do cameras and stuff. And you do cameras. You might know someone who does cameras. Do you know yeah, I mean? but for them to all be black, is it like... You know, is yeah, that the criteria? <laughs> at this point I don't know like yeah yeah I see um, I don't know if it was but yeah even down to the runner was black do you know what oh, I mean oh right 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 so it was like that's interesting but you're gonna have an, a, a, an open racist on your show when would yeah, you not think about yeah. how the staff feel yeah I see what you mean do you know what I'm saying like you're you're behind the camera and I'm you're black and I'm white and I've got this guy sitting in front of the camera saying yeah she's blacks <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're black right there. You're like, what do you mean? Like, what? That it, she didn't even compute that at all. Wow, that's a bit of naivety. Yeah, it's it's naivety. Yeah. She didn't even yeah. compute it, bro. Like, the producer's black. Like, the runners are black. Like, everyone in the house is black, and you're just gonna have this racist sitting in your house. And I'm just gonna be like, bro, that's crazy. To I mean, me. the person even editing it back, even just, the person just watching it. Yeah. Back. So the person's got to watch back all of this racist footage. <laughs> Oh, wow. All this racist footage, just like, oh yeah, I've just got to edit this down. <laughs> I'm just like, bro, this is weird, man. So, yeah. yeah but I was did out. you guys know he was coming on the show? Mm-mm. Oh. That was a crazy thing about it. That's why I knew that I had to get out because the management was flipping. They're pushing for it. Yeah, yeah the management was pushing because no one knew. I, and I was working with her like at least once a week. Mm-hmm. And I didn't get told. And uh, I'm like, what? You look, did this on some silent sly one. Like, you flew him in. Yeah. From America, you put him up in a hotel. Oh. No one knew, and then all of a sudden he's on the show, and no one knows. Oh wow! So it's almost like she got told not to tell anyone. And mm, I see what you mean. I was just like, ah, I'm, I'm, I'm not involved in that. And um, it's funny because her, um, it's funny because her supporters will be, always are like, oh, you're a snake because you done Pearl wrong and you said this. And I'm just like, listen, she can do what she wants, but so can I. Why did they think you'd done her wrong? Because they were like, oh, you were her friend. And then you spoke out about her. Oh, you, right, you, right. You, you should have uh, pulled her aside. And I'm just like, listen, bro, I had private conversations with her. You know? Mm. I had private conversations with her. Um, even on camera, we spoke about colonization. We spoke about slavery. And I just realized that, just, you know when somebody just doesn't want to know? Oh, right. They just right. don't want to know. I mean, like, they don't want to know a different opinion Damn. and it's like but i'm the person from the community that you're talking about yeah who may know a little bit more but it's like she didn't want to know and that's when i realized it's not her it's not so much her or maybe it is but then it's the management that are saying this is what we're going to do this is what we're going to do this is what we're going to do mm. who was candace owens management management funnily enough is what she said right. and i was just like I, I, i'm gonna be out man i'm, I'm not involved and a couple of people have left after you, haven't they? Yeah, everyone left. <laughs> <laughs> All the black staff left. <laughs> she's got white staff um, now. Or... She, 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 she actually oh, right, got white right, talent yeah. now. Okay, I see. I see. So her talent was black. Yeah. She wanted to sign me as her talent and I was like, no, because I was on like an individual thing with her. Mm. But the other talent, she had Auntie Jenny and then King Richards who were both black. The black woman and the black man. Yeah. And um, yeah, after I left and I said, I didn't even tell them. I just said, I'm, I'm, I'm gone. I'm this, Listen, I'm gone. And... Um, yeah, a few months after they all left. And they, I think they all saw it. They won't admit it because they were like Team Pearl when it first came out. Like, yeah, when true. I first shot the video, they were Team Pearl. Yeah. Like, they were like, fuck him. Like, we're Team Pearl. And I'm like, 
all right, cool, time will tell. <laughs> Give it three, four months of that. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, well, I told you, innit? Like, do you know what I mean? So. Do you think it's uh, seen as appropriation? I don't think Pearl's trying to appropriate <clears throat> culture. I don't. Um, mm. I think Pearl is trying to be famous. Mm-hmm. Um, and she's now pivoted into the um, conservative space the American conservative space, which was always going to happen with the management that she had. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And so that's why I was like, ah, I can be conservative. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But I'm not pandering. I hate pandering to people, which is why a lot of people don't like me. But there's a lot of people do. Um, Because I don't pander to any specific group of people. Um, But yeah, I don't think she's appropriating anything. I just think... (laughs) Because you mentioned colonisation, so what did you mean? Yeah, by when I meant colonisation, yeah. is like, colonisation as in plantation owner. Okay, like, right. Like, you know when you're the head of the plantation, yeah. you've got all your slaves. Damn. And but she said it on camera, she said her Africans. What? Yeah, she said, oh, you see my Africans? No way, what, casually? With the racist. That's why I said that. With, the, with the racist? With the, the oh, during the interview? Yeah, during the interview. Oh, no, that's wild. Yeah, my Africans is what she called them. Oh. And I was like... That's our ownership. Yo, I was like, is that how she sees me? Like, as one of her Africans. I was like, I work, what are you talking about? I don't work for you. Mm. And um, I was just like, no, I can't do this. Like, that's the mindset. And I'm saying, it's like, it's naive, man. Is that video still up? She, ta- she It got taken down. I think it might be on, like, Rumble or something. Or, mm. Or maybe somewhere in the ether of the internet somewhere. But, you know, it's not on like YouTube. It's not like readily available now. It's, you know what it is? It's on other people's channels. You yeah, know, yeah. when it came out, other people kind of clipped it and put it on their channel. So I don't think it will be on her channel, but it will be on other people's channel. That's what the internet can do now, isn't it? That's what the internet now can do. Yeah, yeah. So once you speak, mate, like, got, yeah, listen, like this, this video will be everywhere and anywhere. Do you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, it is what it is. Um, you've actually talked about subconscious um, sup- superiority. Yeah. Um, do you think she had that? Or yeah, I, yeah. I think I think subconscious superiority raises its head in places where where when things happen, you see who people are. I've always said, just mm. let something happen and see who people are. Is is it their fault? No. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. Some people are just raised differently. Yeah. They're raised in the society. I, I, I said. Can you imagine, and this is what I said, can you imagine living in a society, and it's not good or bad, yep. being raised where God is white? Mm-hmm. Right? That's the society. That's the image, in. right? Yeah. The, the image of God is white. He's a white man. Yeah, and Jesus, yeah. Right. Yeah. He's white. That's the most powerful being in the universe, mm. is white. It gets to the point where people that look like Jesus, they say, oh, look at Jesus. Right? You see, like, there's a guy, like, a white guy. So you can appropriate God, bro. Mm. Like, and that type of power and influence can be gifted to you. Imagine living in a society like that. You can see it in Af- certain parts of Africa when white people walk through. Oh, my God. Mm. They, looked at, they looked upon like God, bro. Yeah, no, it's true. Yeah. Like, oh, my God, God's coming. Or like they, Jesus is coming. Yeah. They, they can change my life. That's mm. what I'm trying to say. And that isn't their fault. It's because that's the society in which they've been raised. Yeah. Anyone that is raised... And the thing is... It happens in all cultures, generally. Now, I'm going to say something. Like, in India, their god is Indian. Mm-hmm. In China, you have Buddha. In Europe, you have Jesus. In Africa, you have Islam and Christianity. Mm-hmm. Now, you can be a Muslim or a Christian, but I'm saying, what does that do to the psychology of when you come in to interact with those people? What does it do to your psychology? Because you see those people as superior to you, not even consciously now, just subconsciously. Because they are the ones that are associated with this piety and this, this godly type concept. We have people, I've seen people interact. I said I was in South Africa. And obviously apartheid had a lot to do with it. Yeah. But I see people, black people interact with white people like I've never seen interaction between black and white people before. Well, like, like how, like they're above them? Or? Like they are above them, like, like they're interacting with gods. Oh, right, right. And I was just like, I was born in London. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and I'm yeah, like, yeah. why are you treating this guy <laughs> like this? Like, why? Is, and it was the bowing and, the, and everything. And I'm just oh, like, wow, yeah. God yeah. damn, like, that's crazy. <laughs> now, obviously, apartheid had something to do with it because, you know, you're raised in apartheid. But also, the fact that they had God concepts in and around 
the place had something to do with it also. Mm. That's why I said, if you want to go in a little bit deep, images shape your reality. Yeah. And if I colonise your mind with images, I don't need to colonise your land. Your land, Because I've colonised your mind with an image. We're all colonised right now with images. The Nike tick is an image. You can go to anywhere around the world and put the Nike tick. Everyone knows what that means. Mm -hmm. You colonise with an image. The Mercedes emblem is an image. You can colonise a whole people. Put the Mercedes emblem so people are like, oh, that's opulent. Oh, that's a Mercedes. Oh, but you don't even have to speak. It will speak for itself. Yeah. And so images, when it comes to um, the society in which we live in, are very powerful. That's what I've always said to people when it comes to logos and stuff like that. Be very, um, just be very astute as to what logos you put in your mind and the things that you wear and all this kind of stuff. That's why generally I don't wear logos. All oh, right. I don't wear them. Try to avoid them. I don't, I don't buy designer clothes. I don't wear logos. Why, why do you buy designer clothes? Because I don't want to be anybody's billboard. I don't want to be a billboard for someone else to see that emblem and that emblem to have power. Because some people see a Nike tick, right, on someone and be like, oh, what? That person's got a Nike tick, yeah? When you can avoid it, you can avoid it. My car's got a symbol on it. Do you know what I'm saying? I can't avoid it. Cars have symbols. I need to mm. drive. But I'm saying, I don't want to be a walking billboard for someone because people have uh, feelings towards these emblems, towards these symbols, without you even knowing. Roll through somewhere with a Mercedes. Mm. Preconceptions, yeah. They have yeah. preconceptions of what you, what you got a Mercedes, yeah? Mm. Robin. It's just, it's, 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 the, it's the emblem. Yeah. Because yeah. if it was an emblem of a, I don't know, a Ford, you might not have been robbed. Yeah. You've got, you got an emblem or a symbol of a Rolls Royce now. Oh, shit. Yeah, we're going to get him. Because it, it means something. It means opulence. It means richness. It means... Be very careful of the signs and symbols that you put on yourself. Because mm. it could lead you to somewhere that you don't really necessarily want you to... You just want you to have a nice car. Other people may not see it like that. No, so, sure. yeah, I don't wear signs. I don't wear... I try my best. Not to say I, I don't have any signs and symbols on my clothes. Yeah. But I try my <clears> best. Not, if I do wear a sign or symbol... It might be a sign or symbol of someone that I want to be more known and that kind of stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? But generally, no. Nah. Has Pearly Things, has a platform kind of died a bit? Because I, I, I heard it's kind of... Someone said that it has. Yeah, I heard she lost a lot of followers. But I don't know because I don't interact with it. Is she, is she American, English? Where is she's she from? American. Okay, right, right. Um, I think she's from Chicago. She came to London. Um set up her podcast and it's and, doing well. Do you know what I mean? As far as I know, do you know what I mean? You know, all right, just, just out of interest, you don't think it's weird or appropriated that she kind of took English culture and black people and made a podcast? Um, if, you, if you look to, at it from To be that, fair, yeah. she took everyone. <laughs> okay, right. To be fair, because I've yeah. been there from the beginning. Yeah, yeah, because you know, yeah. 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 To, just to be fair. However, mm. she did take a lot of black people on because black people are very entertaining. <laughs> like, like, that's just what we are known as entertaining people. Plus, a lot of black people want to be entertaining and they want to be on TV. Yep. Right? Um, so all types of people were approached because I know like, what happened with the approach for people to be on. You know, a lot of black people said, yeah, they'll be on it because um, maybe they've seen other black people on it. And, mm. Do you know what I mean? And stuff like that. So... Yeah, to be fair, I don't, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't say it's appropriation. I think, okay. yeah, I, I think it was a product of being in London. A lot of black people in London. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. And if she did it in the countryside, there'd be a lot of white people. Mm. But she was in London. A lot of people are in this clout chasing, being in London. And it's like, yeah, everybody wanted to be on it. Do you know what I mean? So... I would say that I would say that that had something to do with it being there from the beginning. Yeah. How, you know how did you meet her? Um, she got in contact with me on the internet. Oh, okay. She was right, reacting right. to my content. Oh, I see. And then she was like, "Oh, I like your content. I'm coming to London. I was thinking about doing a podcast. Would you be part of it?" Oh, nice. And I was like, "Okay, let me know when you get here. If if you get here, because <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. all, all tough stuff all the time on the internet. Yeah, of course. And she did. A few months later, she came and she contacted me, and she was like, "Oh, I'm doing this podcast. Would you?" like to come down and I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, I'll come down. And it kind of just snowballed from there and I was on there regularly and yeah, then we started doing our own one. Oh, cool, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. 
Can I can I ask? I know you were behind the scenes and you were there, or you were there in the scenes. Mm -hmm. Can you can you share like a mad story that you might have seen or anything <laughs> crazy you might have seen then? If just anything that might come to mind. Hmm. It's the wildest thing you saw. In. Uh, nothing. <laughs> I'm just thinking anything that like crazy that There's happened. no fights on set. There was no Cause fights. Because I, I saw people getting kicked off. And, yes, but it was yeah. never on my show. That's the oh, thing. Right, right, right. And because um, my show wasn't the pregame. And that's yeah. what people, a lot of the time people have lumped it in together. And I get it because it's she's on the show. But mine and her show was called The Great Area, which was mm. I bought the content to the show to have what was going on and bought the guests and blah, blah, blah. And so no one was kicked off of one of my shows. Like, no one was like, it just wasn't happening on my show, even though she was there. On her shows, it was. So that's where the craziness would have happened. But yeah. there's nothing that I can know. Um, yeah, maybe like some. One of the girls tried to invite me back to her place. All oh, right, right. <laughs> Did you go? Nope. <laughs> nah, I, never. Uh, I plead the fifth on that. <laughs> Not fair enough. Mm. Should women bring more to the table, um, or do they bring enough? I think y women of this generation need to bring more peace to the table. Mm, so if anything, I'm, I'm, when people say what, when they say things that to women, what do you bring to the table? I don't think they're talking about money. Yeah. Guys don't care about women's money. Like, because it's not theirs. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's, it's not our money. So it's like, it's theirs. So I think women of this generation need to bring peace. So that's what a man needs, peace. That's what a man wants, man. He wants mm. peace. Um, but is that and, only rich men that, that need that? Because that's all men, man. All yeah. men need peace, bro. Mm. Like, all men need a woman that's going to bring them peace. I keep telling, them, telling women, if you're a man's peace, he will always come back to you. Always. Because mm. that's his peace. That's his peace place. That's his peaceful place. So, yeah, women need to bring more peace. That's a Less good drama. answer. Yeah. Less stress. Yeah, they used to bring more table. <laughs> this today we need to bring more peace. That's what you need to do. <laughs> don't stress the man out. Yeah, don't stress. Saying. No stress. <laughs> do women like women? Women don't like women. Yeah, because I heard you say this. I've said this. Women don't like women. If this is a bunch of women in here in the studio right now, I said, I've, I've, remember, I've been doing podcasts with women and mm. I've watched them. And if another woman walks in, the women are eyeing her up. They're eyeing her. They're wondering what type of woman she is. They're competing. They're looking at her hair. They're looking at her arms. They're looking at her bum. They're looking at her shoes. They're looking at everything to kind of see exactly what type of woman she is. And yeah, my whole thing is women see other women as competition and they're all competing for the same type of man generally. All right. Yeah. So if, for instance, if a big baller walked through the door, yeah. all the women have the same thing in mind. If they're all single... They're thinking, oh, okay, he's, he's a catch, right? So they've yeah. got to compete for one another. How are they going to compete? They, have, they, don't, they don't like each other. That's why women give each other the worst advice. Oh. Women give each other the... Because, because there's a com you don't give your competition the best advice. You give them the worst advice. Women mm. will say things like, like we talked about earlier on, oh, I want to be a whore. You go, girl. <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> what, what are you telling her that for? <laughs> Why? Because you know men, especially older women, they know men don't want whores. Yeah. But they were like, yeah, you go, girl. What do you mean? Because the man's not going to choose you as a, all right, he'll have sex with you. That's why women always say, oh, but he's coming home to me. Yeah. Right? Because they know, they know the types of women, the uh, types of women that men come home to. They know. So, yeah, women give each other the worst advice, bro. Like, and I, I swear, I've watched it. I've watched women give each other the worst advice. And it's, a lot of it lives in La La Land, it's delusional. Um, it's like, well, if you feel like that, you do it. Do you know mm. what I mean? It's just like, oh, we give each other the worst advice, I swear. <laughs> so, um, so, yeah, all the older women that are, the older men generally give younger men the game. Okay, right, right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm an older man. If people come to me, like, I consult men. Yeah. Like monthly. They come to me, oh, what's going on? My baby mother's this. And it's kind of in court. I'm just, uh, this is what you do, bro. Yeah. Men generally try to give men young, because they don't want them to make the same mistakes that they did. Mm. The older women don't do that to younger women. Because the older women and the younger women are competing for the same man. Damn. That same man 
who is of a certain age and a certain status, the older women want him too. Because they're going for younger women now, aren't they? Right, yeah, yeah. Men are going for younger women, but the older women who maybe have got that man understand that the younger women's their competition. They ain't giving them the game. You're crazy. <laughs> they're not going to give them the game. They're going to be like, okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Older women do not give younger women the game. They don't do it. So yeah, they'll give each other the worst advice. Women are other women's worst enemy. You'll hear women say, oh, I don't really have money for female friends. They know that the women are fucked up. Yeah. <laughs> like they know it. So, you know. Uh, do, you, do you think it's harder to find a wife in today's society? 100%. Because of what? Because of hypergamy being on steroids. Um, the fact that everyone's delusional. Mm. But everybody wants a six-figure man. Right? Um, and trust. No one does trust anyone anymore nowadays. Mm. No one trusts anyone. Trust is... Trust is rare. Yeah. When men don't trust their women, women don't trust their men. They say they do, but generally they don't. Because, like I said, is it hard to find a wife? We've, since the 2000s, heard, you are not the father from Maury Show. We've heard that. Yeah, many you're times. Thinking, you're, you're thinking, yeah, shit, yeah. women are out here just giving guys the wrong child, bro. The trust is gone, bro. I'm telling you. <laughs> paternity fraud is biggest. It's funny. The, one of the highest places for paternity fraud is Nigeria and Jamaica. Seriously? Where men, yeah, where men um, have children that are not theirs. Damn. UK's coming up as well. Like, the America's coming up. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, people, uh, wives. I, I said, I think a marriage is a beautiful thing. So what, what's changed? Is it the woman that's changed or the man? Or, or, or just changed. relationships? Society's changed, yeah. and women have um, women have become more "quote unquote" independent. And like I said, with their independence, they e- e- equaled that to being a whore. That's what they've done. <laughs> they said, "I can be independent," which means I can throw my vagina at any man I want, and no one can tell me anything. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's cool. But you're going to mess yourself up in the long run. Do you know what I mean? Because Men don't want whores for wives. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> they want them to have sex with, but they don't want whores for wives. So, yeah, the society's messed up. And plus, men have become less manly. Mm. Men have become less manly. Um, Damn, yeah. And yeah, the whole, the whole thing's been flipped on its head, man. No, fair enough. And yeah, I think relationships have been flipped on its head. So, I've always said to people, if you find yourself a good one, man or woman, hold on to it, man. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Don't let no one give you no damn stupid advice. You take your man's advice and as a man, you take your woman's advice. Yeah, that's, that's what you should do because no one else is in that relationship besides the two of you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, essentially, true. the two of you is in that relationship. So the two of you generally are going to have each other's best interests at heart if there's good trust there and there's a good bond there. So, um, yeah, your friends... A lot of the time, especially when it comes to women, misery loves company. They want their girl to do the hot girl summer sometimes. Do you know what I'm saying? The guys will be like, oh, man's got locked down. Yeah, he's locked down. Blah, blah. But it'll, that, that'll be the gist of it. Do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, no, no, he's got a girl in it. Yeah. Yeah. I just think the whole thing's been flipped on his head. A lot of people are pro-black. Mm-hmm. Do you think being pro-black is wrong or do you think you could be too pro-black? Um, I'm, I would call myself pro-black black in the sense that I want black people to progress. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. Um, I don't um, meddle in people's bedroom activity. If you've got someone who's non-black as a partner, it's none of my business, right? Mm -hmm. Um, I I, I like black women myself, but just because I like black women don't mean that you might like them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. But... I still want black people to progress. So I would call myself progressively black. Um, my son's black. <laughs> you know, my partner's black. Mm. Like, like that's, that's what I want. I want black people to progress. I can see what's going on with black people in the community. I'd be like, no, I want you to progress. I want us to progress. Um, but can you be too pro-black? In what sense? I don't understand. Like, All right, so like you got black owned products and black owned this and some people go, you know, I'll only shop black, which is, which is, it's up to them, yeah. 
Oh, you're saying it's not possible? I don't yeah. think it's possible. Mm. But where they can, where they can. You yeah, know? where you can. I, yeah. I shop black where I can. Mm. So um, if it was the other way around now, you know, what, what makes it okay? Or just, just your opinion. Um, what, you, what, like shop As, white or something? Yeah, yeah. White people came out and go, look, this is a white-owned product. But the thing is, they don't need to. Or Because most products yeah. are owned by white people. Or Indian or, or different ethnicities. No, no, I don't mind other ethnic. If, if, an, yeah. if an Indian person says, oh, there's Indian business here and we want to yeah, yeah. go for it. But I feel like if, uh, is it because they're a man minority that it's okay? If you understand what I mean? Yeah, I think it's because we live in a Eurocentric society. Yeah. So most things are going to be skewered towards Eurocentrism. You know what I'm saying? I'm not saying that it's a bad thing. Mm -hmm. If I was living in India, I'd be living in an Indian-centric society. Yeah, yeah. Most things are going to be skewed towards Indians. Do you know what I'm saying? It just, it, it depends on where, where you are. We live in a Eurocentric society. Mm. And so that's fine. But if that's what you are living in or where we're all living in, that means the majority of products are going to be owned by you, aren't they? So, and I'm not saying it's a bad thing either. That's what I'm trying to say. Like, people yeah, think yeah. that when I say this, it's like, bro, you're supposed to own it. It's your society. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? Like, yeah. in India, the Indians are supposed to own it. In China, the Chinese are supposed to own it. It's their society. In Africa, Africans are supposed to own it. Unfortunately, it's not. It's owned by other Western companies, other Western countries. Yeah. In, in Arabia, you've got Arab, um, in the UAE and Saudi Arabia, it's owned by them. Why not? What, what's the problem? Their oil. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, fair let enough, them yeah. own it. Like, what is, what, it doesn't make sense. It just, I think people have a problem with it when it comes to black people. And, I'm, and that always raises suspicion for me. Because I'm like, everyone can own their own stuff. Mm -hmm. Even white people, own your own stuff. I don't have a problem. It's when you start hating other people is when there's a problem. Yeah, no, fair enough, fair Do you know enough. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. when you start saying, oh, those <clears throat> over there, those, that's the problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, But if yeah. you're saying, oh, yeah, we're going to own our own stuff, go for it. No, oh, fair enough. Fair as long enough. as you allow me to own mine, though. Do you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Don't say okay, that yeah, you can yeah. own yours and I can't own mine. Do you know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> Would you say black people can be a fetish for other, for other cultures, other ethnicities? Yeah. Yeah. Or they're, they're like sexualized by other ethnicities? I think, or... I think the fact that you can look into the porn culture mm. and there's a section that says BBC. <laughs> there's, that's... there's also other ones that are white though, no? The, the, yeah. but, the, but, sorry, the BBC culture is yeah, yeah. specifically for black men having sex with white women. Mm. Like railing them, big black guys, <laughs> like just railing these, these white women. And I'm like, if that's not a fetish, I don't know what is, guys. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a fetish. But the thing is, the porn industry is a billion dollar industry, multi billion dollar industry. So I'm just like, so how does that feed in society? Because that's being consumed by everyone or certain groups of society. That must feed into society somehow. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, that feeds into your subconscious. So if that's an outlet for certain people, then that means that that can feed into society. That means that it can be black people and white people fetishizing each other in the society. Yeah. But they say it's a relationship. I don't know. I see. Me, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? They I think, I think it does scale down to. to yeah. Of course it, yeah, it yeah. comes into society. So it's like, yeah, of course they can be fetishized. I don't know who is, though. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know who's <laughs> fetishizing who. I don't, I don't know. If, I don't know. But I'm saying, of course it can be. It must be. Because mm. I've heard people say that, you know, what, black men will fetishize white women, white women fetishize black men sometimes, you know. I'm sure they do. Mm. You have a whole BBC culture on the board. Like, <laughs> of course you do. Like, it's, it's there. Like, to say that it doesn't exist would just be lying. Yeah, yeah. Do you know and what I'm it, saying? Yeah. It would just be lying. And then also I've heard about uh, diversity hires. Have you heard that? Where someone's getting hired because they're black. Like a yeah. diversity hire, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As in your, your team at work needs more... Cultures, more culture, yeah. more diversity. Inclusivity. That's it, yeah, mm. yeah. So some people go and turn around and go, you know, I, I think I'm a diversity hire now. <laughs> I've never heard of that though, but no? yeah, of course, yeah. All right, yeah, yeah. Of course, like, I just think, do you know, I just think people just need to be more real and just more honest, like, mm. I think the world would be a better place. As long as people aren't hating people, this is what I said, as long as people aren't hating people, yeah, and disrespecting them, I don't see a problem. I really don't. Um, quickly, just for the viewers, can you explain red pill um, community against the uh, blue pill? Well, the, <laughs> the, blue like, pill your... commu the blue pill community, <laughs> right, yeah. would probably be a bunch of men who pander to women, say they like what women like, in an attempt to try and get vagina. 
right? <laughs> we all know those guys out there that say certain things so they can get some pussy. Too. Oh, so they're like pro feminists. Pro feminists. Yeah. Right, whatever women say is like, yeah, you know, like, it's not going to get you the vagina, guys. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, women don't respect those guys. <laughs> like, you'll get friend zoned in an instant. And then you will have the Red Pill guys who kind of say, you know what? Men deserve their rights. They deserve to be, um, they deserve to be masculine. They deserve to have um, their space as men. Mm. And they don't really care what women think about it. I think with the red pill space, if I'm honest, um, I think it's like, I think it's getting into, it's becoming a minefield. I think the people that are entering the red pill space now as, as quote unquote men, like I said before, John Zerker and people like that. It's just, I watched my, my run from Fresh and Fit do stuff with a KKK hood saying that, oh, you know, black people are this. And I'm just like, this is not red pill, bro. Yeah. But they're in that space. So it's like, what are you doing? So when people get money and status, they revert to type. See who they are. Yeah. Give anyone in their money and status and see who they are. Oh, so you think the true them, the true, true themselves them coming out. out. Yeah. So this is what I'm saying. So these guys that have got all of this money and status right now, you're just seeing the true them. Mm. You know? Um, Cokeheads. Crazy guys, do you know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> just guys that want to chill with their friends. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's who they are. Yeah. And now you've got the time and money to do that. All right, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, you didn't have, you had it all in your head before. But it's, that coming you want, it's, it's coming out now. It's coming man. out now, You've got the time yeah. and the money to do it, bro. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? You're just showing us who you really are. That's fine. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's why you always say, when you get to, it's not about money corrupts. Money shows who you are. Mm. Money and status will show people who you are. That's why people that have got money and status and they just chill and humble and they're good people, it's like, you know what, that's who that person is. Mm, that's what it. they're like because they could be a total arsehole, bro, but they're not. No, oh, fair enough, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. saying? They're not. They're just cool, they're chill. That's the true them. That's yeah. the true <laughs> them coming out. Yeah, true self, yeah. You know? <laughs> Can black people be racist? So this is a question that I've heard, right? Mm. Um, and like I said about the scale of racism, I think black people can be race prejudiced. I think all people can be race prejudiced. Mm -hmm. For me, racism, by via definition, depends whose definition you're going by. I think of racism, this is a long-winded answer, but I think of racism as a, it needs to be looked at holistically. Can't just be looked at um, on one level. I have to ask myself the why racism exists, right? And so when you get to the why racism exists, that's when you can answer the question of what racism is and how it affects people. So if I ask myself, why does racism exist, right? And I say, hmm, it exists, what, because people didn't like each other? No, people have always not liked each other. So it's not just because people don't like each other. People have not liked each other because they've got different colour eyes, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's specific to race, why did a bunch of people specifically decide to not like this race of people if they did not do anything to them? Yeah. Must go to a psychological level. It has to be something psychological. Because if you and I are sitting down right now not doing anything to each other and we're cool, but you say, because of because you're black, Sarah, mm -hmm. I'm going to F you up. I'm going to be like, bro, I didn't choose this. Like, what are you two going to do that for? Like, I didn't do this. So there must be a psychological reason. So we, so to understand racism, the long answer, the short answer is, everyone can be race prejudiced. The long answer is, why are people racist? If we can answer that question, mm -hmm. from a psychological point of view, I think we can get to so many understandings. But trying to answer that question <clears throat> makes people very uncomfortable. Why did you decide one day that a bunch of people who are not like you must be treated less than you? Why? Because you didn't like them. No, it can't be that. It's, it's too simplistic. Mm -hmm. There must be a psychological reason. Let's go into the psychological. Oh, don't go into the psychology. Because then you're going to see who I really am mm -hmm. and what I really think. 
Now, Francis Cress Welsing says, I know I'm going long, I know I'm going on it, but <laughs> Francis Cress Welsing says, the reason why racism exists is for the genetic survival of white people. Wow. It's for their genetic survival. Because genetically, all races of people on the planet can annihilate white people. Yep. If they just have sex with their women. Mm -hmm. There's no longer any white people. So how do I stop that from happening? Create a system that keeps white people here and keeps the others over there. Mm -hmm. What's that system called? Racism. That system's called racism. Yeah. Just keep me here and keep you over there. That system's called racism. So the system of racism exists and people within that system can be race prejudice. So I can call you a whatever. I can call him a white whatever. I can call him a Chinese whatever. What, but why did I call that? Where did those terms come from? Black people never woke up one day and made the term chink. I didn't make that term up. Who made it up? Europeans made it up. Why? Do you know what I'm saying? That everything comes down to the why. So the long-term answer of can black people racist is, is, to, is to be continued. You need to understand the why. Mm. Can they? Really, they can be race prejudiced. They can say, oh, this white person, this, 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 this. but can they build, have they built a system? Did they have a psychological reason as to why they don't like these people? A lot of people react to racism. White people do certain things. Black people are like, oh, you know what? Right, he's white. But we say, oh, that's racism. It's like, eh, if I punch you in your face and you punch me back in mine, is it the same? Yes, you punched me. Yeah. Yeah. And it looks the same, but eh, you wouldn't have punched me if I didn't punch you, bro. Mm. Like, you wouldn't have done it. So, to say it's the same, is it really the same? So it's open-ended, bro. <laughs> it's open-ended. No, I understand. It's a deep answer. Yeah. It is, it yeah, is. It's, yeah. it's open-ended. Yeah, no, fair enough. Um, I've got some random questions now. Okay, go on. There was one I wanted to ask, but I'm not too sure. Because I had a friend who say, you know, black people are too inviting. Yeah. They're too, do you, do, would you agree? Black people love everyone except themselves. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Black people love everyone except themselves. Mm. Um, and it has been to their, it's been a gift and a curse, yep. I'd say. Um, black people need to learn when to build walls around certain things, in my personal point of view. Because everyone does. Listen, there's stuff going on in Chinese culture that I'll never know anything about. Yep. The Chinese know about it. There's stuff going on in Arab culture that I'll never know anything about. The Arabs know about it. There's stuff going on in Albanian culture that the Albanians know that I will never know about, bro. Yeah. Everyone knows what's going on in black culture. Everyone, like, and I'm just like, when do, you, when do we start building walls? Like, so <laughs> people don't know certain stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah they're too inviting and they've, they've opened up their culture to everybody. In my personal point of view. That's fair enough, yeah. So... Other people don't. You know about it, but you don't know about it. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you don't know about it. Everyone knows black culture. So, yeah, in the short answer. So. <laughs> Fair enough. So, you do Speaker's Corner, you say every Sunday? Uh, no, no, I've done it. I used to. Oh, I haven't right. done it for five years. <laughs> you get, do people get in a lot of quarrels and like crazy arguments? <laughs> when I was there, it started. <laughs> it didn't start like that. Yeah. It started quite cool and calm and collected. Um, but in honesty, um, as I started questioning more people's religion, because mm. it was a very religious space. Oh, right, right. Yeah. Very religious space, specifically a Muslim space. Christians, yeah. uh, I questioned them too. I had a couple debates with pastors and stuff. <laughs> um, it got more and more progressively angst, I would say, when I was there. I haven't been there for like five years, <laughs> All right. but I was there for like five years. Um, and yeah, it got more progressively angst. And I interacted with a lot of Muslims there and a lot of imams and a lot of sheikhs and stuff. And for me, I was just like, I don't like the way um, freedom of speech is being shut down. Yeah. And um, yeah, for me, that's what, that's what um, crescendoed within the... Um, the uh, Osman warning, the threat to life. Warning. Oh, right, right. So, yeah, where did yeah. it come from there? Uh, it come from there. Um, so, yeah, when it was there, it was, it could, it could be hostile. 
And if I'm honest, I just think it's because I was able to break down things that other people weren't, places other people weren't willing to go. Mm. And I was, you, as you've heard, I've been speaking today, I just speak. Like, I, I don't necessarily mince the words that are coming out of my mouth. I just say it how it is. Yeah, I'll say the word whore. Yeah, I'll say the words like whatever. Do you know what I mean? And it's just like, I'm not saying it to be disrespectful, but that's what I think of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, that's what I think of it. And um, yeah, there are certain people that didn't like it. Fair enough. Are you, are you religious yourself? Do you believe in I'm, anything? I'm a, I'm, I'm a pantheist myself. Okay, right. So um, I never say that there is no higher power. There is a higher power. Mm -hmm. There is, and it is energy. It is, the, it is everything. It is the all. It is the one. It is the thing that connects everything to everything else. That's my system. But can you, can you define that system or you can't? Is it, is it too bad? So there are many pantheist systems. For me, um, a pantheist system, let, let me say my system. My system understands that everything is energy. E okay, equals right. MC squared, right? Mm -hmm. From the camera to you to the lights. Everything is vibrating on different frequencies. It's energy, it's atoms, it's molecules, it's protons, neutrons, electrons vibrating on different frequencies. So energy is the root of everything. It's the root of the sun. It's the root of the air, the water. Everything is energy vibrating on different frequency. And so as a pantheist, I understand that everything is interconnected. And if everything is interconnected and it's all joined by this thing called energy, what is everything? Energy. Hmm. And it expresses itself in different forms. I'm, I'm expressed in a different form. The camera's expressed in a different form. You're expressed in a different form. Um, energy does one thing. It does not... It, sorry. Energy cannot be destroyed. It cannot be created. It transforms from one form to another form. That's what energy does according to the laws of thermodynamics, right? So once you break something down... It just, becomes in, it just becomes another form of something. You can grind that whole camera down, it will become dust. It's still energy. You put it under a microscope, it is still, it is still atoms, protons, neutrons, and electrons. It's a different form now. Mm. When, I, when you break on your car, the energy that you're going, the, the, the potential energy now becomes heat on the brakes. The energy transforms from, from motion energy to heat. Mm. Energy just transforms from one form to another. The, the, cam the, the screen on the camera, which is glass, used to be sand. Mm. Right? Everything just used to, everything used to be something else in a different form. You used to be a sperm and an egg. You were energy in a different form. Everyone <laughs> used to be energy in a different form. And so, when I, as I know that, I can't separate myself from the all. Because if you, what's here is what's out there in the universe. The stars, they're energy too. The whole universe is energy. Yeah. Everything is energy, just in different forms. So, in my view, the all, what people call God, is just energy. Just expressed itself in different forms. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's a lot, yeah. That's, that's, that's a lot, but yeah. that's what it is. So, yeah. when people say, oh, I'm a Muslim, I'm a Christian, I'm a Jew, I'm a this, I'm a that, I'm, da, da, da. I'm just like, all right, that's cool. Because a lot of that, for me, that a lot of that is separation. Mm. You're saying that there's this thing, and then there's us. I'm saying the thing is us and us is the thing. So afterlife theories or? There is no afterlife. Everything just transforms from one form to another. So you believe that like, when you're dead, you're just, you're dead? No, you just oh, become you something else. So, all oh, right, so you become that kind you of- become the, the earth. Corpse and the earth and, all right, right. I don't know how many people outside, there's grass outside. I don't know how many people died there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's probably <laughs> dead bodies there. Like, it just becomes part of whatever. It, everything transforms from one form to another form. It never dies. It just becomes a different form. But we've not been taught that everything becomes a different form. We've just been taught that there's a stop point, then there's this ah! heaven thing going on. Do you know what I'm saying? And I'm just like, okay, cool, but no one's really seen that. Yeah. <laughs> like, no one's really seen that. It's just people, what people believe, which is fine. But for me, like I said, logic dictates to me that everything just becomes something different. I don't know. People can ask me, is there an afterlife? I don't know. Mm. Do, you, do you believe in any conspiracy theories? Do you believe like the earth's round or flat or? Um, do I believe in any conspiracy theories? Um, I believe aliens exist. Do you? Yeah. 
In, in what I, kind of form were you not sure? I don't know. I yeah, just yeah. think this universe is too vast for just to, just to be us. Yeah. Like, I just think that nah, there must be something else, mate. Like, this universe is vast, bro. Mm. What, we're the only living thing in it? <laughs> like, really? I don't know about that. So, yeah, I would say aliens is like a conspiracy theory that I believe in. Can't prove them to you, though. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I can't prove them to you, yeah. but I believe it, though. Yeah, have you heard of the flat earth theory and all these yeah. things? And, and there's like a, a... I don't know. Um, as far as I know, the earth is round. Yep. Um, if I look at the moon, that's round. <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> so we're the only flat thing. Like the flat, we're the flat thing, that's a round thing. Um, yeah, I see what you mean. Do you know what I mean? I'm like, all the planets why are we there. flat then? Mm. The, like, <laughs> the planets are round, so why are we flat then? <laughs> like, why, why? What's so special about us? So, yeah, as far as I know, everything's round. No, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. All right. Um, in all your life, what's the craziest thing you've ever seen that you can think of? The craziest thing I've ever seen? Oh, I was convinced that I saw a ghost. Serious? I was convinced when I was young that I saw a ghost. Um, it was, I could have been just young and tired. <laughs> but I was convinced, you know when you, you hang clothes on a door? Yeah. And, um... You say on the door? You, yeah, you know you hang clothes <laughs> yeah. on the door? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the shadow, like, look, makes a face. I remember going to bed thinking, that looks like a face. I was probably about 10. And I woke up in the middle of the night to go to the toilet. I looked in the shadow, and the shadow started moving. The, yeah. Like, the, the mouth started going like this. And I remember there being a trail of piss from the toilet. <laughs> to my bed because I was like I'm not finishing my piss brother I just ran back to bed ran for your life yeah. um, but I will always remember that that's probably the craziest thing I saw yeah do you, do you believe in ghosts now or um, it's, it's again it's energy I think it's energy um, expressing itself in a different form mm. I think the soul what people call souls of dead people are just energy expressing itself in a different form because it's not because you can't die so where does it go do you know what I mean so yeah. it's just like it might, it might, that might be it. Fair enough, fair enough. Do you know what I'm saying? I don't know, like, so. Uh, another random question. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I know you've spoken it before. Um, back in your acting days, I think you, you did a scene with, um, is it with, with the same sex or? Yeah, they, I was on a chan I was on a TV show. Um, yeah. Called, called Family Affairs. And my oh, was that one, yeah. My character was bisexual. Oh, right, right, right. So I said we're going back 20 years now. All oh, right, right, yeah. So, um, yeah. It's funny what people bring up 20 years later. <laughs> well, what age were you, though, when you were, when you were acting 21. then? Okay, right, right, right. Like 21. And um, fresh out of acting school. And yeah, that was a character. The character was, I had to kiss a guy. Um, it's mad to talk about it now, because it's like, <laughs> I've done it like 20 years ago. Like, yeah. People are like, oh, well, you done this. And I'm like, do you know, I've, do you know I'll tell you what I've written. I'll tell you why it's come out, as a matter of fact, because I sat and I thought about myself, thought it to myself. I said, there were people 20 years ago who are now... 24, mm. 26, 28, who had no idea that that show even existed. Yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? No, so true. now you're 28 or you're 27 or you're 26, you've come up on information which is 20 years old, but it's new to you. Because people are like, I never saw it. Well, you were six, bruv. <laughs> bruv, you were six, fam. Like, what do you mean you never saw it? Yeah. Like, yeah, but, oh my God. And it's like, well... Yeah, like, you were a child. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? Like, I've been around for a while. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm 42 now. Okay, right, yeah. Um, yeah. So it's like, I've been around for a while. So, yeah, that's when I started to realise to myself, oh, that's why people, oh, okay. <laughs> it's the new version of the 26 to 27 to 28-year-olds that didn't know it actually existed. But it was on, someone said, oh, you're trying to hide it. I'm like, hide a whole TV show. <laughs> it was on, I was on it for two years, bro. Like, yeah, it's public, I, yeah. It's public. Yeah, like, you I can can't find hide it. anything. Like, yeah. But some people knew and some people didn't. But how do you get into that frame of mind? Is it just like, I'm a professional, you know? Like, yeah, like, when it was, when I was, when it happened, like, yeah. I was just a fresh actor, bro. Like, I, I'd done so many different roles, like, mm. and it was just a role for me. So just that part of the job, yeah. Yeah, I see yeah, it's mean, like, yeah. It's, you see, like we're here. There's people behind the camera. There's lights. It's not no. In, it's not an intimate setting. It's yeah, like you've got yeah. to do a scene, bro. <laughs> like it's like you got to do a scene. You got to do this. 
Yeah. Like, and it's like, it was a daytime show. So it was like, I'm not going to be like having a porn. Like, it's not yeah, porn, yeah, I see. Yeah, yeah. Do you get what I'm saying? So it's like, it was people, like, people acting like I was some kind of, I don't know, <laughs> like I was some kind of porn actor or something. I'm just like, bro, it was a fucking daytime show. But it's like, <laughs> I've noticed that because if people don't like you, they will bring up anything. Oh, so you think people bring it up in a negative yeah, light? Yeah, people don't yeah. like you, they bring it up, bro. And then it just, and people latch onto negativity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it becomes part and parcel. I'm a strong believer that if you, if you have something that someone thinks negative and you own it, you know what I mean? No one can really, you know, say bro, anything I, about I it. Yeah. it to the internet. Yeah, yeah, no, no. <laughs> that's, like, that's what I mean. People try to go like I'm hiding from something. I'm like, you all right? No, but you done that. <laughs> Yeah, 20 years ago, and I uploaded yeah. it to the internet so people can see it. No, fair enough. Yeah, yeah, you're acting, yeah. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's, it's like, you got like a small room my real life. <laughs> so I'm just like, yeah. Um, yeah, it's just like, I've done it. To, I don't think about it because it's like two decades ago to me. Mm. It's, mm. As I said, the internet or life is crazy. It's like someone bought something that you've done 20. Up twenty years ago, I don't know even know how old you how old you are. I'm thirty. Yeah, yeah. So when you were ten, someone brings something. Old. When you were ten, yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah, I was ten, bro. <laughs> like, I was ten, in it. Like it's twenty years ago. Like yeah, yeah, but and then they try to judge you on it. Mm, mm. And I'm like, you can't judge me on something that I done twenty years ago on a, as as an acting role. But if you do, you're entitled to. By the way, yeah. But I just think you're stupid. Mm. No, I, I agree. Do you I know agree. what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm just like, I just think you're dumb. And you're just looking for an excuse not to like me now. Like, I'm just like, you're, you were searching for something, you found something, you're like, I don't like him because of that, that's it. Yeah, because he's done that. I'm like, right, just, just tell me the real reason why you don't like me. Do you know what I'm saying? I yeah. just don't like what I say about this, about that, about this, about that. Say that. Don't use that because you found something. And, oh, fair enough, fair enough. You, know you, got, you got a strong meaning name, right? Because I, I, yeah. My name is Sara. Sa means sun, as in S U N. Yep. Ra means sun, as in, sorry. Sa means sun, as in S O N. Ra means sun, as in S U N. So yep. my name literally means son of the sun. Nice. As you can see, I'm dark. So <laughs> I'm a son of the sun. So yeah. And, and the Garvey's from? Uh... Garvey's from Marcus Garvey. Nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. How did, so, how did you come up? Is that like a name you gave yourself or? The name I gave myself? Yeah. I gave myself this name about 10 years ago. Um, so, yeah, I wanted, I wanted something meaning, if I'm honest. So, there it is. Nice. I wanted something with meaning. Um, why, why did you pick that kind of, you know, son of the sun? Why did you go to the, that the name? The name Garvey. came when I was studying the cultures of the Nile Valley. Of what, sorry? Yeah. The Nile Valley. African oh, right, right, yeah. yeah. I studied African history for about 15 years. Wow. Myself. Yeah. Um, along with Abrahamic religion for about 10. And I was, there was a time in my 20s, my early 20s to like my 30s, to like 30s, that I constantly had a book in my hand. You couldn't see me, I was on a tube, train, go to work, break I always had a book in my hand I was never not reading and um, I started studying the Nile Valley cultures and um, the name kept on popping up kept on popping up Sarah the Sarah the Sarah Sarah a son of son 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 of son and they would call some people the Sarah and I was like I like that name I like it it has meaning and yeah so I took it so yeah when it comes to African history something that I studied and I loved Loved it. Is that a legal change or kind of like a... No, it's not a legal change. All oh, right, it's just a, um, yeah. like a personality change. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah. name, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I mean, people that, people that have known me longer than 10 years still call me by my government name. Yeah. But people that have known me after that just call me Sarah and I'm fine with it. My mum mm. never calls me Sarah, you're mad. <laughs> Fair enough. Mum calls me by the government. <laughs> mm. um, with your, you know, knowledge you say you studied, do you know... Or what is your opinion on who built the pyramids? Because that's, that's been a long kind of standing argument. You built the pyramids. Africans yeah. built the pyramids. By hand? The machines? Um, Africans what, what? built the pyramid by a hand. Yeah. Um, I mean, 
this to me is, to me it's common knowledge, to most people it's not. Mm -hmm. People like Diodorus, who is a, of Sicily, he's a historian of Sicily. People like Homer of Greece, people like Herodotus of, of Greece. Um, all of these people who were closer to the time told you exactly who the Egyptians were. They described them as black people. Mm -hmm. These are white historians or white people of the time. They describe them as black. Yeah. So for me, it's like, it makes sense. Like, you can see the first um, pharaoh of Egypt who was called Nama. Yep. You see his boss, he looks black. He looks nose big like mine. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> I'm just like, like, it's only controversial because of Egyptology, modern day Egyptology and the way in which they went in uh, 642 AD, uh, Muslim Arabs went in to North Africa and kind of took over that place. So North Africa has become very quote unquote Arabized, right? Mm -hmm. But it wasn't that before. And that's like, that's like a new thing. So, but with, with Egypt coming, it's interesting because with Egypt, that happening in Egypt, when you read the history of Egypt, there were like three major invasions, Persian, Assyrian, Greco-Roman. So there were obviously times during that time where, excuse me, where other people ruled the throne. Yeah. And those are the things that we get, that gets thrown out. Look, he was white. Look, he was, yeah, because they, they were ruled at that time. It's like if Chinese invaded here, mm. the king of England was going to look Chinese, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But then there was a time where the white people took back over and they, they ruled their land. So it's like, if you only see that history as one dimensional, when you read it, bro, the layers to that, that place is crazy. Mm. And it's lost as like 10, like 10,000 years. People think that what, it's a 10,000 year, this civilization isn't even 10,000 years old yet. But you, you want to talk about it. It's like, you, you can't, you have to talk about the layers and who was ruling at what time, at what dynasty, at what, what genre, and like what was going on during that time. You have to know. You can't just say, oh yeah, it was this. So a lot of the time people don't know, and which is fine. But like I said, I studied it for a very long time. So It's a question we ask everyone. Um, mm -hmm. what, what inspires you? Change. Change inspires me. The fact that Things, I know things are never going to stay the same inspires me. Okay, right. I know it's like this right now, but I know it's not always going to be like this. So change inspires me. Me understanding that people may be dumb one day and then 100% smart the next day inspires me. The fact that I can sit here thinking I know something and then in 10 years time I may not know, I may think something different inspires me. Like change inspires me. I want I want to be I want change to happen, mm. and um, yeah, that would be my inspiration. My inspiration would be change. Nice, yeah, nice. And uh, what can we see from you over the next couple of years, or, or what are you working on at the moment, like goal um, goal wise? There's something I'm working on, right? Mm -hmm. That I don't want to speak about. Okay, right. But when it's time to speak about it it's going to be so left the field. <laughs> and it's to do with humanity. It's a humanitarian thing. Right. Um, but when it's time, I'm going to speak about it. Um, and it's to totally non-social media driven, blah, blah, blah. Um, however, social media wise is, you're going to see more of the same. I'm going to be like, uh, you know, speaking on social issues, speaking on race, religion, politics, social issues, relationships. Blah blah blah, as you said. Um, there's so much. There's there's a wide range of things that I speak on. Yeah. Um, I like that because I'm not a one-dimensional individual. So yeah, in the future is more of the same. Nice. Yeah, more of the nice. same. Nice. No, thank you very much. We'll we'll keep in touch and. No and, problem, man. Yeah, so you've got to keep up with your YouTube, and we'll keep watching. Keep up with it. That's been good. Mm -hmm.